five, six, seven, eight. Wow, honey, you're so good. Oh no, now I'd lost count. Um, how long had she been standing there for? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. Can you teach me some moves? I hesitated, but I didn't want to sound mean, so... Um, sure, Carol, come in. I'll show you some of the basics. I did some simple moves for her to follow, but... Oh man, she was awful. Seeing an out-of-shape, middle-aged woman attempting front lunges and high Vs isn't something you see every day. <laughs> but I did appreciate that she was putting the effort into getting to know me. Oh, sorry. You must be wondering why I was calling my mom by her first name. Well, she's actually not my mom. She's my stepmom. You see, my mom passed away when I was 10. Then last year, when I turned 15, Dad started seeing someone again with help of a matchmaker and he thought it was important for me to have a mother figure, and that's how he ended up marrying Carol. I enjoyed having bonding time with Carol, but it quickly became kind of uncomfortable. She watched me practice my cheerleading moves every night, started up conversations about the boys at my school, and she insisted on binge-watching TV series with me. Yeah, you all must know how awkward it is having an adult sitting next to you while there's some romantic kissing scene on the screen, right? Jesus, I needed my privacy. Then one time, I arrived home from school to find her in my room, going through my makeup. Donna, sweetie, how exactly do you use this? <sighs> okay, so this was a bit too much. She's crossing some lines here, messing around with my stuff without asking, but I couldn't bring myself to get mad at her either. You see, Carol is the definition of an ideal housewife. She's such a kind-hearted woman, and she always kept the house immaculate and cooked delicious meals. Maybe she spent so much time doing this that she didn't have any time to take care of her appearance? Hey, everyone deserves to feel beautiful, right? So, I showed her how to apply makeup. Carol, you do so much for Dad and me, so I think it's about time you treated yourself. How about we go to the mall tomorrow? I would love to. I thought I was doing something nice for her. Little did I know, this was the start of something crazy. The next day at the mall, I took her into a clothing store where women her age shopped. I held up a nice blouse, but she shook her head. Then, to my utter dismay, she insisted we go into the pull and bear store next door. But Carol, that's for teenagers! But she still marched us in there. Then she pointed at an outfit and asked me if I could try it on for her. <sighs> I wanted today to be about her, not me. But okay, as long as she's happy. I stepped out of the dressing room and twirled, and the store staff immediately complimented me. Then, Carol suddenly turned to the staff and asked them to get the exact dress in size XL. What? Was she going to wear that too? Carol coyly stepped out from behind the curtain and asked, So, what do you think? I froze for a moment. I mean, Look at her! She looked ridiculous! But I couldn't tell her that, so I reluctantly gave her a thumbs up. And just like that, Carol bought us both the exact same dress. But there's more. She suggested that we both wear them right now, while we were still in the mall! I spluttered out, Um, shouldn't we save them for a special occasion? But her mind was made up, so there we were daughter and stepmom walking through the mall in matching dresses. I could feel all eyes were on us. We even ran into one of my friends, and she mistook Carol for my cousin. At least, that was until she saw Carol's face. That poor girl looked like she'd just seen Annabelle. Carol sure was flattered, as on the way home she beamed as she said, To think, your friend thought I was your cousin. <laughs> I should dress like you more often. It takes years off me. And I kid you not, she actually meant it. From that moment onward, she started dressing like a teenage girl. Or, to be precise, like me. Exactly like me. Apparently, I was the only one finding it weird in the house. Because my dad said nothing. I needed to talk to her, or else someone at school would see me and make fun of me. So that evening, I went downstairs to see Carol sitting on the couch reading some magazine. I took a deep breath and said, Um, 
Carol, can we? Oh, hi, sweetie. Look, I'm choosing a cake for your upcoming birthday party. I hope that's okay. Oh, no. Why is she always so sweet and kind? This made me feel so bad. She's doing so much for me, and all I do is complain. So obviously, I didn't bring up the subject of her copying my style. That's just trivial, right? Instead, I sat next to her and we talked about the birthday party. Then she showed me some pretty dresses on her phone and asked me to pick one for my party. Hmm, I really like this one. Carol smiled. Oh, that looks lovely. Great choice, sweetie. Imagine how stunning we'll look in these. We? Oh, no, not again. It had to be now or never to talk to her about this. Carol, um, I don't think we... But at that exact moment, my dad arrived back from work. What are you two still doing up so late? Before I could say anything, Carol ran over to him. Donna and I are going to wear this dress on her birthday. What do you think? Great. Anything that makes my ladies happy. I couldn't go through the humiliation of being dress buddies with Carol for one more time. On my special day? I needed to do something. I had a plan, but the timing had to be faultless. So, on the day of my party, when Carol was ironing her dress, I rushed in and told her that the delivery guy had just dropped off the wrong cake. Carol freaked out and ran downstairs immediately. Ha! Huh, it worked! Now, let's get started. And, well, ten minutes later, as expected, we all heard a loud scream coming from upstairs. Dad and I rushed in and saw Carol sitting on the bed crying into the dress. Darling, what's wrong? She held up the dress. L look, it's ruined! There was an iron-shaped burn mark on it. Yep, you guessed it. It was all me. When Carol left the room, I turned the iron's temperature to max. My god, I really had to pinch myself trying not to laugh. But suddenly, Carol turned to me and in a serious voice said, You need to change to another dress. What? She can't be serious, right? It's okay, Carol. You can just wear another dress. I don't mind. No, it's not okay. We've planned this. Go get the blue one that we both have. Listen, I don't think we should dress the same. It's just weird. Then my dad jumped in. There's no time to argue. The guests are already waiting downstairs. So Donna, go get changed. Ugh, unbelievable. It was so embarrassing. All my relatives were complimenting us, but I knew they were really laughing inside. My friends, on the other hand, were sniggering and telling me we looked like a budget version of the Olsen twins. <sighs> I thought that day was already a nightmare, but then it got extremely annoying when she even started to copy my behavior. One evening, my boyfriend Thomas came over and we were all eating pizza in the living room. I took a bite and said, OMG, delish! And the next thing I knew... Carol was quoting those words of mine as she sipped on her Diet Coke. Cringy! Then later, when Thomas had to leave, I walked him to the door and I squeezed his cheeks as a cute little goodbye, since we couldn't exactly kiss or anything in front of my parents, obviously. But guess what? Just under five minutes later, Carol suddenly sat closer to my dad and did the exact same thing to him. It was so weird. And my dad wasn't really impressed either. But here comes the worst part. A few days later, my friend had sent me a link to Carol's TikTok account. Oh. My. Days. It was a video of my dad. And it had thousands of likes. Then suddenly, I heard noises coming from downstairs. Carol? Carol! Carol scampered out of the kitchen looking clueless. What's wrong, honey? What's wrong? My colleague just sent me a video of you playing a prank on me. Everybody has seen it. Even my boss, my customers, everyone. How am I supposed to go to work now? Ruining my career. Is that what you want? So much for being an accident. Yep. The video I was talking about was this one, where Carol baked a fruitcake for my dad and then smashed his face into it. Then when he looked up, he had two strawberry slices stuck to his eyes. He kind of looked like that creepy clown from the movie It. She uploaded it on her TikTok account, and it instantly got viral. 
I played that prank on my friend a while ago at our slumber party, but I didn't expect that Carol would copy it. Get out of my house! My dad's shout took me aback, while Carol burst into tears and begged. Please, honey, don't do this. I'm sorry. But my dad didn't listen and just told her to pack and stay out of his sight immediately. As she started to move, I grabbed her arm. Carol, wait. I know that you've been copying my clothing style and my behavior, and now this TikTok. But you must have a reason for that, right? Carol nodded, so I calmed Dad down, and we sat down with her as she sobbed out. My first husband often made fun of my dreary appearance. He even banned me from going to his family events, as he said the way I looked was embarrassing for him. Then eventually, he couldn't stand looking at me anymore, so he handed me the divorce papers. Now I'm with your father. I worry he too will get irritated by my looks, and I'll be abandoned again. But he adores you. Therefore I thought that if I tried to be more like you, then he'd adore me too. My God, Carol's ex is such a jerk. How could anybody want to get a divorce just because their partner didn't have the best dressing sense? I hugged her tightly and said, Nobody's going to abandon you. You're a part of this family. But how about we find you a new style of your own, instead of copying mine, okay? Carol nodded at me with a light smile while still sniffling. My dad eventually calmed down, apologized for overreacting, and came over to join us in the hug. So after that, I started helping Carol with the house chores so she had more time to spend on herself. I showed her how to style her hair, helped her pick out some stylish clothes, and sent her the links to some videos on makeup tips. Now she has her own chic image going on. She kind of reminds me of Martha Stewart. <laughs> I always thought my stepmom was bonkers, but turns out everyone's got their own story, right? And we should get to know them first before jumping into any conclusion. Everybody should feel good about themselves, and no one should ever make them feel otherwise. She's so pretty, just like a real-life Barbie. I wish my hair was as shiny and blonde as hers. This is what people think of me, but all I ever wanted was just to be a normal teenage girl, like everyone else. You see, ever since I was little, I stood out with my platinum blonde hair and turquoise eyes. People have always said I look like a Barbie. Hey, some of them even call me Barbie. My mom's always been super proud of my looks. She used to put me in princess dresses and sign me up for kids' talent shows, which I more often than not won. This led to media attention, and soon, I was invited to model for some big brands. Back then, I was super excited about this. I loved all the praise and pampering, but unexpectedly, it was that early fame that made me gradually lose my freedom. Nora, go get dressed. Quickly, I'm not showing up late for Anna's party. Yes, mom, I replied as I reluctantly grabbed the clothes my mom had laid out on my bed. Nora, your natural hair is so beautiful. Before I even had a chance to reply, mom was in there bragging about my natural blonde hair. Natural? Yeah, right. So it has nothing to do with the fact mom makes me bleach it once a month? <laughs> she made a huge deal a few months ago when she noticed my hair beginning to slightly darken. Then mom dragged me from person to person, boasting to them about my achievements. Ugh! This was so tedious. So, when she was absorbed in convo with some guy, I sneaked over to the food table and grabbed a slice of cake. I was about to put it in my mouth when suddenly, from behind, my mother's stern voice resounded. Nora! Put that down this instance! Huh? It's just a small piece of cake. I was hardly going to balloon up after eating it. Then without giving me time to argue, she snatched it out of my hand and said, Eat that, and you'll have to skip dinner and do cardio for one hour to burn all those calories off. Do you still want it? Jeez, there's no point arguing with mom. So I grabbed my drink and went to the corner of the room. I was fiddling with my glass and feeling totally fed up when suddenly a guy came up to me and almost caused me to spill my drink. Oh my god, it's Philip. 
the hottest teen model in the scene right now. Sorry, um, are you Nora? I've heard a lot about you, but why are you standing here all alone? Ah, it's because I'm not really into parties like this. So we're the same. Then we started chatting, and before Philip left, he asked for my number. After that, he texted me every evening. Talking to him was so much fun. He was just so sweet and thoughtful, and he always sent me the funniest memes. How cute! One day, while we were chatting, he texted me, Can I invite you to dinner? Let's say, tomorrow evening? Ah, oh, was he asking me out on a date? Yay! But I had to ask Mom's permission first. Ugh. Mom, do you remember Philip, who we met at Anna's birthday party? Can I go to dinner with him tomorrow? Sure, I'll, I'll drive you there. No need, Mom. Philip will pick me up. No, I said I'll take you. No matter what I said, Mom still insisted. And if I didn't follow, she wouldn't let me go. Jeez. This was a date, not a fashion show that required a manager. The next evening, as soon as I walked down the stairs, my mom was at it again. Oh. My. What are you wearing? Before I had a chance to reply, Mom pulled me into my room, took out a bodycon dress, and said, You put so much effort into looking this way, so you may as well flaunt it. Besides, dating this boy could bring business deals for us. Gosh, I get it now. All this was just about fame and money. There Philip was. I quickly fixed my hair, then I confidently walked towards him. But when I had just sat down, before I could even greet him, out of nowhere, my mother appeared and asked the waiter to arrange another chair for her. Philip gave me this bewildered look, but I didn't know what was going on either. Mom, what are you doing? We've always been together. You don't mind if I sit here, do you? Uh, uh no, not at all. <laughs> Philip smiled awkwardly. Ugh, this was so embarrassing. When the waiter appeared with the menus, I was actually glad of the distraction. Oh no, I didn't even have the chance to open the menu, but mom had already finished ordering for us both. Grilled salmon with salad and no dressing. Ugh, how boring. Oh, but it gets worse. During dinner, my mom kept asking Philip questions like, What do your parents do? Oh, they only run a small business. I thought they were the presidents of a corporation or something. It's unbearable. Stop it. It's none of your business. I was just asking. A flustered-looking Philip made up some excuse about having to do something. Then he left. That's it. Thanks to my mom, my first date completely failed. Frustrated, I left right after he did. I didn't say a word to mom for the whole journey home. Things didn't end there, though. When we arrived home, she kept nagging about how I shouldn't hang out with Philip as he wouldn't be of any use to my career. Don't you think you're being too much? I can date whoever I want to. You know what? I don't want you to be my manager anymore, and I'll be moving out on my own. Then I rushed back to my room and started packing. Honey, I was just worried about you. I'm sorry, she said and hugged me while sobbing. Please, don't leave me like your dad did. I can't live without you. Hearing that, my heart fell. She was right. Ever since Dad left, there was only her taking care of and loving me. She's a bit tough and over-controlling, yet she meant well, right? I texted Philip a few times to apologize, but he didn't reply. Nora, look straight. Nora, where has your charisma gone? Let's take a short break. What's going on? You seem distracted today. I sighed and started telling Eleanor about my date with Philip. Gosh, your mom's a total control freak. You need to be strong and stand up against her to win your freedom. Well, of course I wanted freedom, but where should I start? Suddenly my phone beeped and stopped my train of thoughts. It was mom. Honey, Anna's sick, so I'm staying at hers tonight. Dinner's in the fridge, and don't forget to go on the treadmill an hour before bed. Love you. Yay! Tonight I'd be free and do whatever I want. So suddenly, I came up with a brilliant idea. Yes, I was going to have a slumber party. 
Eleanor suggested we should order pizzas, and of course everyone excitedly agreed. So good. Suddenly, the door opened. My eyes widened in horror when I saw that it was my mom, and oh boy, she looked furious. Nora, what on earth are you doing? And you can guess the rest. She made all my friends leave, and worse, she forced me to wake up at 5 a.m. to work out. All this just because of a bite of pizza. Eleanor was right. I needed to put a stop to this by finally standing up to her. This is unbearable. So, as a stress reliever the next day, I decided to do something I always wanted. Wow, it's so cute. I know, right? It feels good to do what I want for a change. Nora? Why are you here? How come you didn't answer any of my calls? Startled, I turned around to see my mother standing there glaring at me. I quickly covered the tattoo on my wrist with my other hand, but it was too late. Nora, how dare you get a tattoo without my permission? Get back in there and get it removed right away. No, Mom. My body, my choice. From now on, I'll make decisions about my own life. Everyone on the street stopped to look at us. Seeing that, Mom just glared at Eleanor, then dragged me over to the car. But how did she know I was at the tattoo studio? Right at that moment, my phone buzzed with an unknown AirTag device nearby. Wait, could it be? I quickly checked my stuff and oh my god, it's true. Mom had stuck an AirTag into a hidden corner of my bag. Why did you attach an AirTag to my bag? So I'm aware when you do stupid things like tarnishing your body with some awful tattoo. As soon as possible, you're getting it removed. I'm 18. I can do what I want. Eleanor was right. You just want to turn me into a puppet to control. I knew it. Nora, I forbid you to hang out with that girl ever again. She's jealous of you and wants to ruin your career. She just wanted to help me. Your behavior isn't acceptable. And she pulled me into my room and locked the door. You can stay there until you see sense. I banged on the door and shouted till my voice was hoarse, but it was no use. Three days passed. Mom still brought me food, but she refused to let me out. Oh no. Did she want to keep me here forever? I hurriedly called Eleanor for help, but it didn't work. Why didn't she answer the phone? Then suddenly I saw an article reporting that a model had spoken up about how Eleanor had been tricking her to steal her vedette spot for a famous designer's upcoming show? And that model was... Me? Impossible. That did not happen at all. And I have not been in contact with the press. Then a thought crossed my mind. Mom? That's right. As my manager, she must have said this to the media to defame Eleanor. Meanwhile, Eleanor must think it was me who did all this. Ugh, no wonder she was ignoring my calls. Angry and disappointed, with mom's behavior, I decided to confide in my Twitter. Unexpectedly, after only 20 minutes, my post was shared quickly and the hashtag RescueNora was at the top of the search. But then my mom angrily came in and confiscated my phone. Don't expect someone to come here and save you. The next morning, I was awoken by loud noises from outside. Huh? What was going on? I went to the window and saw a crowd of people holding signs, saying free Nora and let Barbie out. But wait a minute. I spotted some familiar faces. Eleanor and Philip. They were holding a big sign saying we want to see Nora. Finally, under the pressure of the crowd, Mom was forced to release me. Honestly, I was grateful to the people who supported me, especially Eleanor and Philip. Thanks to them, I dare to finally break my mom's unreasonable control and grip and be myself. So, I decided to move into my own place. As for my mom, ugh, I want to forgive her, but it's hard. I just hope she realizes what she did was wrong. Then we can try to rebuild our relationship. Oh, and one more thing. From now on, I won't bleach my hair. Just to get doll hair like before. I decided to keep my natural hair color. It may affect my modeling career, but so what? It's my natural hair, and I like it. Anyway, 
as you can see, life's good as I have my BFF Eleanor and my boyfriend Philip by my side. Wow! Magnificent! So, I'm going to live here from now on? Unbelievable! Everything has happened so quickly that I was struggling to believe it was real. Yesterday afternoon, when I was helping out in my family's diner, suddenly, a film crew rushed in and claimed that they were from the reality TV program Long Lost Love, which reunites lost family members. While I stood there confused, they announced to me that I was the lost child of the famous director Gabriel Perez. What? Did that mean my parents adopted me? Through tears, my parents told me that 13 years ago, in a bustling, crowded fair, they saw me wandering around aimlessly, so they brought me home. And even though they reported it to the cops, there were no leads, so they decided to adopt me. And so begins my life as a young lady of a rich family. As you'd expect with the home of a famous director, my father's mansion was impeccable. From the designer furniture to the stylish decor, the whole house was like a French-style castle. I peered at the huge photo of my grand-looking parents. Suddenly, there was a whisper. The master must be very happy, you know. His second wife couldn't give him a child after all these years. Yes, yes. Now that he's older, he had to search for his biological child to lean on. Oh, so this woman, the woman who came with Dad to the reunion yesterday, wasn't my biological mother? Hmm. In that case, I wonder who's my real mom? Miss, come in, please! Inside were my parents and some specialists, who then immediately pulled me in for a complete makeover. Whoa, I looked really gorgeous. My hair was so glossy, and this makeup made me look so glamorous. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I would end up living here and feeling like a princess. Beaming with happiness, I turned to look at my dad. But suddenly, I was startled to meet eyes with the maid. She looked so gloomy. Why did she keep staring at me with a poker face? Hmm, that was odd. Carol, let's move along. Strange. But never mind. Maybe she's always like that when she's seeing strangers. OMG. Dinner was so luxurious, including caviar and steak. This was so exciting. That night, I couldn't sleep and just rolled around in bed until dawn. But little did I know what an exhausting day was waiting for me ahead. 5 a.m. sharp, I was shaken awake. Huh? Was there a fire or something? A maid informed me that I had a very important press conference this morning, and it was imperative I looked the part. I groggily got out of bed and plonked myself in the chair. I had to wear this posh dress and have this old-fashioned bouncy hairstyle. Ugh! This made me look about 25. OMG. I swear this press conference was the most boring thing ever. For several hours, their conversations couldn't stray away from showing off their wealth, comparing their popularity, and all the showbiz stuff. I yawned dozens of times, but had to hide it behind my hand. I could feel my stepmother scrutinizing me. Ugh. I wanted to go home. You see... The type of person I hate the most are those kinds of showy, scornful ladies. But unfortunately, they're the only ones I've been interacting with. I missed hanging out with the kids my own age. But yeah, since I moved here, my parents insisted on homeschooling me, so I wouldn't be influenced by other inferior children. Ugh. Worse still, the only thing they teach me is about acting and movie stuff. How is that going to help me get into college? But that's not all. After studying, despite being tired, my stepmother forced me to spend a further two hours working out in the home gym. Every time I gasped for breath or snuck a snack, she would give me a novel long lecture. The worst part is she banned anything sweet and made me stick to this strict diet full of celery and hummus. Gross! Then one time, I slipped and fell off the exercise bike and twisted my ankle. 
My stepmother was so furious with me that she made me go to bed without my dinner. I couldn't take it anymore, so I hobbled into my father's room. Dad, why do I have to do these things? I don't like it. Dad said nothing, but just quietly signaled for me to follow him. He led me to a locked room at the end of the hallway. When the door opened, I saw a portrait of a very beautiful woman hanging in the middle of the room. Hang on a minute. My new hair and clothes were identical to hers. Dad stared at the portrait with dreamy eyes. Then he said that this woman used to be a very famous actress. He told me how they fell in love. Then she gave birth to me. So that means this is... My mother? That's right. Your mother is very beautiful, isn't she? And I'll make you perfect, just like her. Then Dad waved me out of there, locked the door, and went away, leaving me standing alone shaking. There was something about his words that unsettled me. Curious about Mum, I went to an old maid to ask for more information. It turned out that in the past, my dad was my mum's manager. And thanks to her popularity, he made a lot of money. Mom was the muse for dad's movies and also the love of his life. But unfortunately, because of a serious illness, she passed away. That was a huge trauma for dad, and he seemed to lose himself. Ever since then, his head's been in the clouds, and he doesn't always make a lot of sense. Is that true? No wonder sometimes I found dad's words creepy. It's time for your yoga lesson. And why exactly are you talking to her? Now that you're rich, show some dignity. Don't liaise with the staff. You're not my mom. You can't control me. How dare you? I'm only showing you kindness because your father asked me to. A silly little girl like you means nothing to me. You're so mean. It's no surprise why. You know, my mother is a hundred times prettier than you. That's why dad wants to make me like her. You? You! Sooner or later, you'll end up like my poor daughter. Just enjoy the calm before the storm. Huh? What did she say? What daughter? Didn't people say she had no children? Then, a few days later, as I was walking down the hallway, feeling exhausted because my current diet plan only included two apples a day, I heard the maids whispering to each other. Look, she won't be able to hold out. It won't last long. Her looks are fading. It's not long now. Then she'll end up like the previous one. What previous one? I went over to ask, but on seeing me, they immediately made up some excuses to flee the scene. Suddenly, someone leaned into my ear and said, Try not to lose your looks. Or else. Huh? I turned and saw that it was that strange maid, Carol. As I watched her walk off, I wondered what she meant by that. Obviously, she doesn't like me. But why? Honestly, there are so many confusing things about this family. Everything is so far from normal, it may as well be on its own planet. They're hiding something from me. I just need to figure out what. One day, while Dad and Patricia went away for an event... I snuck into their bedroom and looked around for the key to the secret room. Result! It was hidden in an old jewelry box. And whoa! This place was full of photos and DVDs and stuff. I found an album labeled Happy Family, and there were so many photos of Dad and Patricia with a pretty little baby girl. There was one photo of that baby girl turned 10. Written on the back of it was 12-15-2014. Happy birthday, our pretty sweetheart. Stay beautiful, Carol. Carol? The birth year. Green eyes. Could it be? That's it. The baby girl was Carol, the maid. Maybe puberty hitting changed her appearance and she's not as pretty anymore. But I could still tell some of her old features. So Carol was the previous young lady and also the poor daughter that Patricia mentioned. Hmm. That made sense, as I'd seen Patricia interacting more with her than the other maids. I once even noticed her helping Carol clean up the dishes. I was still overwhelmed with the secret I just found out. When I looked through the window, 
and saw Dad's car pull up in the driveway. Panicked, I took that photo and ran out of there. I had to leave this place, or else I'd turn into another Carol. I kept on running, but then I bumped straight into Patricia. Oh no, please let me go. I don't want to live like this any longer, please. Patricia snatched the photo from my hand, then took my wrist and dragged me along. Let me go! Get in the car. Uh, uh. Where do you want to go? Um, to my adoptive parents' house. On our way, Patricia told me everything. She was once a famous actress who met, then fell for Gabriel. At first, she didn't mind attaining his high beauty standards, but then she realized that how he made her act and dress was all based on his late wife. She thought that having a child would change him, so they adopted Carol. She was very beautiful when she was little, so they spoiled her and took her everywhere to brag. But when she grew older, her looks began to fade, so Gabriel made her their maid. My dad needed a pretty girl to be her replacement, to be his own muse, so he decided to find another one. Truth was, he had no long-lost daughter. Instead, he got a private detective to look up unsolved missing child cases and discovered me. Oh my god, unbelievable! Now Patricia, too, was exhausted from living this life with a man who was still besotted with his dead wife. She felt bad for Carol, and for me, too. So, okay, turns out Patricia wasn't as bad as I thought. On the contrary, she was kind of pitiful. We are so sorry for letting you move into that house. I knew there was something not quite right about the situation, but I wanted you to be happy without money worries. So, we let you go. We should have realized. We're so sorry. I'm sorry for not being able to stop Gabriel. He went too far. I was sobbing in my mum's arms when I saw Gabriel. He stormed in and dragged me along. This one's mine, so she's coming with me. You can't just buy her. She's my daughter. Right at that moment, my sister Hannah arrived back from school. Gabriel's eyes lit up when he saw her. Then he immediately rushed over and grabbed her arm. Ha ha ha, then I'll take this one. Not so pretty, but I can make it work. We all charged towards him and freed Hannah from his grasp. Gabriel seemed frantic and refused to leave. My parents had to literally bundle him out of the house, then call the cops. So, what now? Well, at first, I was pretty mad with my parents for letting me go so easily but I guess they just wanted me to have no money struggles or anything. <sighs> so I've forgiven them, and now we all live a humble but happy life running the diner. Carol and her mom visit sometimes. They moved out of Gabriel's mansion, and they seem much happier now. As for Gabriel, as far as I know, he's still searching for the perfect beauty to replace his dead wife. There's a part of me that kind of feels sorry for him, but luckily... He can't come anywhere near me or my family, as we have a restraining order against him. Looking back on it all, I now realize that I already had everything I needed. Okay, so we might not be rich, but we have kindness, love, and happiness. And trust me, those things are way more important than bags full of money. Sarah? It's about time you got married. What are you talking about? Get married? Not a chance. I'm still in school. Oh, give me a break. Marrying a rich guy will bring you more money than school ever will. Mom, I'm not like you. I actually like school. Now leave me alone. That was the conversation between my mom and I about two months ago. Well, look at me now. Here I am staying in one of the most luxurious villas in Boston. My name's Sarah, by the way, and I'm 16 and in high school. My life hasn't ever been normal. For starters, I don't have a dad, and my mom is totally irresponsible, choosing to spend any money we have on partying and men. Of course, she doesn't even have a job, so we rely on her latest fling to help support us. <sighs> my mom has never really cared about me, so I just stay out of her life as well. She can do what she wants as long as I can do what I want. And what I want is to study really hard so that I can have a better life than hers. 
But as usual, she intervened in that plan, and two months ago she forced me to quit high school and get married. Obviously, I refused, and I even went on a hunger strike for a few days. But then one day she said, Tomorrow, our two families will meet. If you don't rock up, I'll go to your school and tell them you're not coming back. But if you come, you can still go to school, at least until the wedding. Ugh, school. She's using what I love most against me, again, to force me to follow all of her ridiculous plans. Fine, I agreed. I mean, it was just a meetup. It's not like they could pressure me to get married right away, right? So the next day, I followed my mom to go meet Adam's family. I was shocked when I saw him. He was wearing a mask that covered half of his face, and he just sat there, not uttering a word, just staring at me without even blinking. Honestly, it was so creepy. His parents seemed nice, though, and they explained that he'd been in an accident when he was a kid, which had left him with a severe burn scar on his face. So he wore the mask to avoid scaring people off. I could see him watching me, waiting for my reaction. So I tried to smile back. I felt so bad for him. But at the same time, there was no way I wanted to spend my life with this guy. So I decided to put my plan into action. All I had to do was get his parents to disagree with the arrangement. So I acted as clumsy as possible. I wanted to give the worst first impression ever. As soon as the wine was poured, I leaned over and knocked his mom's glass all over her white dress. My mom looked mortified, but I didn't stop there. I ate with my hands and dropped food all over the table and kept chewing with my mouth wide open. But no matter how hard I tried, Adam's parents still seemed to like me, and I could see him slightly smirking at me. What did a girl have to do to put this family off? Clearly they were desperate. Near the end of the meal, they started discussing the engagement. Apparently, I'd move into Adam's family house so we could get to know each other. Then, if I could help Adam to feel less insecure, they'd let me finish high school before we had to get married. Um, so didn't that mean they just wanted a friend for Adam? Someone to keep him company? Hmm, it's not that bad. I guess I can do that then. So after the engagement, I moved into Adam's mansion. After school every day, I'd hang out with him and try to cheer him up. I'd play him my fave music, show him some epic movies, even try telling him jokes. But still, he barely smiled. He wasn't interested in anything I liked. Then one day I was struggling with my science homework when he passed by and decided to check out what I was doing. Suddenly he started chatting away, and I realized how much he loved chemistry and physics. He even offered to help me with my assignments. He was so passionate about those subjects, and this was a win-win, because I'd finally found something we could discuss. He even started opening up to me. It was a start. I began to feel more comfortable around him. On one sunny day, I even asked Adam if he wanted to play a game of badminton. At first, he refused, as he didn't like being outside, but I wouldn't stop begging until he said, Fine. Have you played this game before? No. Okay, then let me show you. I was so excited to teach Adam. Although I'm not great at hand-eye coordination, I'd been playing badminton a lot at school, so I felt pretty confident. Finally, I'd found something I was better at than him. Ha! Huh. Okay, so I spoke too soon. After a few missed serves, he somehow mastered the shuttlecock and kicked my ass. <sighs> Why did you say you have never played this before? Because it's the truth. I, I don't believe you. Adam just shrugged and then left me lying on the ground. He had to be bluffing. It's impossible for anyone to be that good the first time they do something. Ugh. But it was fun, I guess. Adam was growing on me, but I couldn't be around him 24-7 as I had classes to attend. And no cap, I was extremely happy that I still got to go to school. Plus, at school something incredible happened. One day I was walking through the schoolyard when I tripped over a can. Just as I was about to faceplant on the ground, a hand appeared and pulled me back up. We made eye contact, and I swear it was love at first sight. His name was Brian, and he's super handsome. From that moment on, we texted nonstop every day, and it wasn't long before he asked me to be his girlfriend, and of course I said yes. I was smitten, but I obviously had to hide it from Adam and his parents. One night, I was on the phone with Brian when suddenly a text from my mom arrived. In fact, ever since the engagement, she hadn't even been in touch. Maybe she was too busy spending the huge amount of money that Adam's parents had given her. Sarah, I really need some cash, just around $500. 
Can you please ask Adam if he can lend me it? What? How have you already spent the money his parents gave you? Stop asking questions. Just get me that money, okay? Ugh, money, money, money. All she cared about was money. She didn't even ask if I was okay. Um, um, I, I want to ask. Can, can you get me some money? Money? For what? Um, I, I, I need to pay for my tutoring class. I haven't had money to pay for the past few months. Hmm, how much do you need? Um, about five hundred dollars. Okay, I'll tell the butler he'll give it to you later. Phew, that was easier than I thought. Uh, but Adam didn't ask twice about it. Was it because that amounts just nothing to a rich guy like him? Anyway, at least he'd said yes. That would shut my mom up for a bit. If only... A few days later, she texted me again. This time she wanted $3,000. Was she kidding me? Uh, I just ignored her. But she kept bombarding me with texts and calls. It went on for days. She wouldn't leave me alone. I didn't give in, though. Until this photo was sent to my phone. It was of me and Brian holding hands and clearly in love. Turns out my mom had been so desperate for the money, she'd turned up at my school one day to talk face to face, and that's when she saw us together. She then threatened me and said that if I didn't get her the money, she'd tell Adam's family what I was up to. This terrified me, because then I'd have nowhere to go, and I wouldn't be able to go to school anymore. I couldn't let that happen. I had no other choice but to keep asking Adam for the money with my lame excuses. From buying books, to a relative who was ill and needed treatment, you name it, I'd use it. Every time I asked Adam, he looked at me like he was worried about me and asked if I was okay. This made me feel even more guilty, because it seemed like he genuinely cared about me. To make up for it, I'd bake him cookies, and even knit a cute sweater for him as a birthday gift. But then, a few weeks later, he asked if we could talk. As soon as I walked into his room, he threw a bunch of photos at me. They were all of me and Brian. I couldn't believe it. Did my mother betray me? But that's not the case. He told me how he'd had someone follow me because he felt I'd been acting weird. Not only had he discovered I was dating someone, he'd also found out that I'd been lying about the money and giving it to my mom. He was so disappointed in me. Please leave me alone. I don't want to see you anymore. I was so worried I'd be kicked out of their house, but no one mentioned anything. His parents still chatted to me at dinner, and they seemed happy enough. Only Adam avoided me, which of course made me feel terrible. The only one I had to lean on right now was my sweet Brian. So after dinner one night, I decided to go over to his place. I really needed some comfort right now. But when I arrived outside, through the window, I saw another girl in his room. They started kissing and I thought I was going to be sick. In a panic, I quickly crawled over and hid below his window to listen in. But aren't you a bit too close with that Sarah girl lately? Don't you dare. Don't worry, Pumpkin. It was all just for you. I noticed that she lives in a big mansion, with personal drivers and all. Her family must be filthy rich. So I just wanted to be a good friend and help them spend those money. You know, and maybe that way, I could get you the new Chanel handbag that you always want. Oh, really, honey? So, how's it going? Well, a dud. Seems like she's the stingy kind of rich girl. Ugh, keeping every single nickel all to herself. How was I supposed to believe what I'd just heard? My heart was shattered into pieces, and I couldn't hold it in anymore. I stood up and put my face against the window. You're dumped! Brian looked so shocked to see me there, but I didn't wait to see if he had anything to say. I just ran home in tears and locked myself in my room. Sarah, open the door. Do you know how many days you haven't eaten for? Sarah, open the door. If not, I will send someone to break the door down. Oh, God, are, are you okay? What's going on? Nothing. I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry for lying to you all this time. I, I didn't mean to. Suddenly, Adam hugged me and said, It's okay. Don't cry. Now can you just tell me what happened? In tears, I told Adam the whole story. From being used by my mother to being betrayed by Brian. Perhaps this is what I deserve for lying to you. Actually, 
If I were you, I wouldn't want to marry someone like me anyway. You're a great guy. As long as you have confidence in yourself and live with a more positive attitude, good things will happen to you, I promise. Even with this ugly face, I looked up at Adam and, oh my gosh, the burn scar on his face. It was worse than I thought it would be. I reached out to touch it. It must have been so painful. Can we, can, can we start over? Keep helping me, okay? I looked at Adam, smiled and nodded. So after that day, I continued to stay at Adam's house and help him get out of the isolated, self-deprecating life he'd been living. Gradually, his attitude improved, and he even started taking a business course to get ready for taking over his family's company in the future. I also encouraged him to start taking off his mask. Love everything about yourself, including that scar. As for my mom, she's currently being detained for her illegal gambling. Yep, that's what she spent all that money on. She'll probably end up in prison. And even though this isn't what I want for her, she kind of deserves it. Oh, and about the wedding. We postponed it. Lucky for me, both Adam and his parents want me to go to college first and pursue my dreams. Once I graduate, we'll probably start planning our wedding, though. And it'll be truly out of love this time. <laughs> Bye, Auntie. I waved to her. I promise I'll be fine at home alone. That's good. I'll be back soon, B. Then she left. That's my Auntie Anna. I was staying with her while my parents were on vacation. I was about to walk back into the living room when the doorbell rang. So I immediately ran to the door and looked through the peephole. Ah, it was Mom. I quickly opened the door and rushed out to hug her tightly. Mommy, how come you're back so early? Mom stroked my hair and softly said, Oh, sweetie, I came to pick you up. How can I leave my little princess alone? Now, hurry up and pack your things. I gave a confused look. But Auntie Anna's at the grocery store. Shouldn't we wait for her? She shook her head. No, sweetie, I already called her. So we quickly packed my things, and Mom led me outside to a rather old car, which was completely different from our usual BMW. Mom, where's Dad? This isn't our car. I asked her. She knelt in front of me and smiling said, Daddy's waiting for us at the beach. It's going to be lots of fun. I jumped up and down excitedly. Yay! I couldn't wait to build sandcastles and splash in the sea. This was so cool! On the way, I must have fallen asleep, as when I opened my eyes, it was already dark outside. I got out of the car and looked around. Hmm, where was the ocean? All I saw was some small house in an unfamiliar neighborhood. Beatrice, this is our new home. Just you and me from now on. Mom's sudden words totally woke me up. Mom, why? What about Dad? I stammered. Listen, I'm sorry. I can't explain it to you at the moment. You're too young to understand. I had so many questions flying around my head, but looking at Mom's sad face, I knew I shouldn't ask her anymore. The next morning, I woke up excited and curious about our new beginning here. I opened the curtain and saw a group of kids my age playing across the street. So, without thinking, I rushed outside to join them. Hello, I'm Beach. Suddenly, my mom came out of nowhere, a frantic look on her face as she shouted, I told you to stay inside, and pulled me back home. Everyone was gawping at us, including the man who lived across the street. It was so embarrassing. As soon as the door slammed shut, in a serious tone, she said, We just moved here. You shouldn't make friends with strangers that fast. And don't talk too much about yourself, okay? Mom had never minded me playing with other kids before. So why now? This didn't make any sense. After that, she only let me out of the house for school. And she always kept an eye on me. So that's why I couldn't make any friends here. I resented her so much. I was so lonely. One good thing about it was she didn't have any house rules so I could spend all day watching cartoons while eating junk food 
and she didn't mind at all. This was great, as before we moved here, Mom and Dad never let me do stuff like this. But eventually, I got sick of those junk foods. I felt kinda icky. I longed for Mom's special spaghetti with crab sauce, so I begged her to make it. At first, she refused, saying that she was very busy, so I kept on whining until she finally agreed. Later, I went to the kitchen for dinner, and the room was an utter chaos. Pots and pans everywhere. Mom looked messy, too, as she passed me a plate of spaghetti and meatballs instead of her signature dish. Well, okay, it looked delicious anyway, so I took a full fork of it as Mom watched on. Poof! Water! I need water! Gosh, it's so salty! Mom quickly replaced my pasta plate with a box of fried chicken and said, Today I'm busy, so I was a bit distracted. Sorry, honey. Her awkwardness made me laugh. Nah, it's okay, Mom. Mom did seem really busy lately, as her phone was always buzzing. The calls even came late at night when I was asleep, so she always quietly went out to answer it. Guess it's hard being a single mom after all, so I tried to be more understanding. And just like that, time passed. Staying inside and having no friends became the norm for me. Still, I often sat by the window and stared longingly at the kids playing outside. Then one time, when I was doing this, Mom appeared and asked me if I wanted to go to the nearby amusement park. Wow, could there be anything better than this? I leaped up clapped excitedly, then wrapped my arms around her. Honestly, the park was pretty small, and everything seemed kind of tired looking, but this didn't matter, as it was the best day I'd ever had. Mom never used to like rides or games, but today was different. She even got excited when she saw the beanbag throwing stall. She knocked the tins down in one go and won me this giant cuddly bunny. I've never seen her have fun like this before. My mom is so cool! Afterward, mom left me sitting on a bench and she went off to get some ice cream. Suddenly, I saw her rushing back and without ice creams. She pulled on my hand and in an urgent tone said, We need to go home. We're moving. So we packed up our things and left in a rush. I kept on asking mom what was going on, but she dodged my questions. During the car journey, I heard her mutter to herself, We're going somewhere new. It'll be exciting. A new adventure. Yes, it'll be fine this time. I may have been young, but I wasn't stupid. I knew she was hiding something. But she's my mom, and I didn't want to upset her by bugging her with questions. So I stayed quiet and eventually fell asleep. Once again, I woke up in an unfamiliar place and stared out of the window. I wasn't as bothered about this place as I was about the last. I didn't want to get too attached to it, as I didn't know how long it'd be before Mum made us move again. But there was one thing that bothered me. Across the street was a man looking straight at our new house. Hmm. He looked identical to our previous neighbor. Maybe he'd just moved here too? What a coincidence! I mentioned the man to Mum, but she told me she didn't know him, and then sternly told me never to interact with him. At school, I was the strange kid who didn't talk to anyone. The older I got, the worse this felt. And the other kids laughed at me, and I heard them call me weird behind my back. I felt so lonely and depressed. So at home, I often just sat by the window with a book and tried to pretend that the adventures I was reading about were happening to me. <sighs> Worse still, Mom was acting even odder than usual. The other day when I got home from school, I found her chucking perfectly good food out of the fridge. Some were even brand new. I asked her what she was doing and she replied, It's gone off, so I'm getting rid of it. Then she started scrubbing the fridge. The smell won't go. Why won't it go? What was she talking about? Everything seemed fine. What's happening? Then I discovered that Mum often left the house late at night and didn't return till dawn. I knew if I asked her about this, she wouldn't say anything. So that night, I snuck out and followed her. Mom was wearing dark clothes with a hat and a big scarf covering her face, even though it's not that cold outside. Hmm, why the disguise? Then, can you believe it? I spotted her going over to the neighbor's house and cuddling him on his porch. I jumped out of the darkness and shouted, Mom, 
What's going on? I thought we weren't meant to talk to this man. She gave me an alarmed look. I... At that moment, Mom received a text. In a panicked voice, she said to me, Beatrice, we have to go. Now! I'll explain everything later, I promise. Right after that, the mysterious man waved at us and told us to get in his car. Then he sped through the night. After regaining my senses, I turned to my mom and asked, I hope this explanation is good. Um, actually, we're in danger, honey. It's your dad. He's an imposter. I only figured this out when I was on vacation with him and I've been running from him ever since. What? I'd never suspected my dad of being someone else. It made no sense. Then, through sobs, my mom continued to say that my real dad was actually a member of a secret organization, but he had been missing for a while, and now the organization was after us. She often received anonymous messages and calls threatening her. She didn't want me talking to strangers in case they were spies. And those times when she threw all the food out was because she'd received texts threatening to poison the food in our house. She wiped her tears away then said, This is Joe. We went to college together and he's been such a help. We fell in love, but I didn't dare tell you because I was afraid you wouldn't understand. I looked at this Joe guy. I don't know. There was something off about him. But maybe I was just being paranoid. I mean, he had helped Mom out, right? Ah, what's that? Ever since I found out about the secret organization, I've been kind of jittery. What if they suddenly turn up and take me and my mom away? I know Mom's worried too, as she seems so distant. I just want to make things better for us both. Then Christmas arrived. It was quite the special one, as for the first time since we went into hiding, we had guests. Well, one guest, Joe. We raised our glasses for a Merry Christmas, but instead of putting it down, my mom gulped it back in one go. Mom, are you drinking tonight? I asked skeptically. Of course, my dear. It's Christmas. Let me tell you, I'm no less than a man when it comes to drinking. <laughs> I chewed on my lip as I thought about this. Mom had an alcohol allergy, and at the most, she only had tiny sips. Suddenly, a thought came to mind. Maybe Dad wasn't the imposter after all. Maybe it had been Mom all along. She enjoyed the roller coaster rides, though to my recollection, Mom was afraid of heights. She couldn't cook. She now loved Joe, a strange man, and she could have downed alcohol without being ill. If this was true, then who could I trust now? Something wasn't right. I could feel it in my gut. So the next day, I secretly went to the cops instead of school as usual. Then I found out something crazy. Turns out, my real parents had been looking for me for over the past six years. O-M-G. As for the mother I was living with, who was she? I tried to stay calm while waiting for the police to contact my parents first. And as soon as they got there, the three of us broke down in tears. That's when my real mom told the whole truth. Actually, she had a twin sister called Linda. No one had ever known about Linda, as due to her debt problems, my grandpa rejected her and forbade her to ever show up in front of anyone in the family. But my mom couldn't disown her own twin, so she secretly gave her money. Then one time, Linda was asking for too much that Mom turned her down. Unexpectedly, she came and took me away to pressure my mom to send her more money. During that time, my mom kept transferring her money to make sure I'd be provided for. She hadn't given any information about Linda to the cops, though, because Mom still wanted to talk to her first, though, so that her sister wouldn't end up in trouble. Wow, this was a lot to take in. After that... Mom ran over to Dad, who's in line to talk to the police. She grabbed his hand and begged him to give Auntie Linda a chance. Um, as you see, I missed out on having a normal childhood because of my aunt, and what she did was wrong. But there's a part of me that will always care for her, as she raised me for all these years. And my heart urged me to say, Dad, I didn't want to turn her in either. My dad looked at me hesitantly, but in the end, he nodded in agreement. So we decided to deal with it ourselves without the intervention of the police. 
Then, the next day as planned, I was in the front yard with my fake mom when her identical twin marched up to her house and confronted her. Once my Auntie Linda got over the initial shock, she confessed everything to me. <sighs> it was sad, but glad that it's all over now. Mum paid off her sister's debts with one condition, that she would never, ever get near me again. Now I'm back home, with my actual parents. It's going to take some getting used to, as I've forgotten how to make friends. And going outside alone makes me nervous. Looks like the memories of the adventure with my uninvited Aunt Linda might follow me for quite some more time. I know I have to try and move forward. I can't get back the past six years, but I can do my best to try and embrace the future. Ma'am, sorry to inform you of this, but according to our information, Bella Hiddleston was reported dead two months ago after disappearing in the forest, the secretary said. What? This couldn't be happening. But that's my name, and I'm clearly still alive. This was some sick mistake. I asked them to check again, but they kept saying the same thing. Had I been missing for so long that my family actually thought I'd died? The accident had been pretty crazy, so I was feeling confused. I mean, what had I been doing in a forest in Cambodia in the first place? I tried so hard to remember, but I couldn't recall anything. Luckily, some local villagers had found me in a trapping pit and helped me recover. Otherwise, I would have died. I then asked the people in the embassy to help me call my husband and sister. There had clearly been a big misunderstanding, and I wanted to fix this right away. God, the wait was killing me. The secretary tried, but she said, Sorry, ma'am, we can't reach either of those numbers. This was unbelievable. I was stuck in a foreign country with no ID, no contact with relatives, and I'd been reported dead. But in a flash, I realized that I could borrow someone's phone to reach for my acquaintances via social media. So as soon as the secretary lended me hers, I went straight to my husband's profile. But I was so stunned, I almost dropped the phone when I saw his latest update. He'd just made an announcement that my funeral was taking place the following week? OMG! What was happening? How could this be real? I kept scrolling down his profile and saw my sister had posted an old selfie with him saying, Ronnie, I know this is a tough time, but I'm always here for you. We'll get through this together. Hang on, what did she mean? Firstly, I wasn't actually dead. Hello! But also, I know my sister used to have feelings for Ronnie. Did she assume that she could just be with him now that she thought I was dead? What a traitor! We were so close. Surely she wouldn't treat me like this. I had to get home and sort this out once and for all. I asked the embassy to help me fly home without informing my family in advance. I wanted to surprise them. Believe it or not, the day I was due to arrive home was the day of my funeral. What a coincidence, right? I went directly to the funeral venue, in disguise, of course. I wore a huge black hat and sunglasses to hide my face and sat way at the back so no one would notice me. There were so many people there. My family, friends, and even my business partners. It was so bizarre. And then I saw Ronnie. He looked exhausted. I just wanted to run up to him and scream, I'm alive! You can be happy again! But then my sister Kylie appeared and took his arm and whispered something in his ear. I froze. They looked close, too close for comfort. And then I noticed people around me whispering, Oh, it can't be that bad. We'll get a pretty penny from the insurance company for Bella's death. And then another lady said, Not just that, but a younger, prettier wife too, by the look of things. I wanted to puke. Ronnie and Kylie were hugging each other now. All of this made me feel like my whole existence was meaningless. Nobody here really cared about me. I couldn't watch my sister and husband for a second longer. I ran out into the street and kept walking until I couldn't walk anymore. Then I found a motel to stay at. The next morning, I snuck home after my husband went to work. I needed to pick up some of my stuff and get some money. It was so weird being home. Everything looked the same, but I noticed none of my stuff was lying around anymore. Then I spotted it. A big box in the corner. I ran over to open it, and inside was all my belongings. I was shaking as I picked up the wedding photo that used to be on our nightstand. 
I mean, I was barely fresh in the grave and already Ronnie had boxed me up. It was almost like he couldn't wait to kick me out of his life. Ouch! I wanted to get out of there, so I quickly went to our bedroom to get some cash and clothes. That's when I discovered a shocking secret that made me fall onto the floor. As I was taking my clothes out of my cupboard, a strange piece of paper fell out. And guess what? The first line caught my eye was Bella's death plan. It was a sketch showing the path leading to a waterfall and made up evidence along the way. OMG! This was it! I knew that waterfall! It was pretty close to where I had the accident. So, had Ronnie planned this? Was he sick in the head? What had I ever done to him to deserve this? I had to run out of there to clear my head, but something caught my eye at the newsstand. It was Kylie, on the front of the newspaper in an article about how she was going to be running the company in place of our grandfather. There was a photo of Kylie and Ronnie at the inauguration, and look how happy they were. They didn't seem to be upset about my death at all. I wanted to rip the paper up. But wait, why would my grandfather give up his position? He had never mentioned it. He loved his job. This didn't sound right. So I quickly took a taxi to his place to find out what was going on. When I got there, I was so shocked. My heart sank upon seeing him hooked up to medical equipment. Turns out that after he'd heard the news about my death, he'd had a heart attack. When he spotted me by the door, he was so stunned he almost fell off his bed. We hugged and cried, and I told him it had all been a big mistake. Gosh, I was so happy to see him. I could see he was tired, so I told him to rest up and I'd visit again soon. Then on the way out, I spoke to his assistant, Cody. I need a favor. Could you help me prepare a case against Ronnie? But suddenly, I heard footsteps coming towards me. Bella? Is that you? I turned around, and it was Ronnie. I didn't even have time to think clearly before he rushed in to hug me tightly. I could feel the tears rolling down his cheeks, and he seemed genuinely shell-shocked to see me. I was disgusted, though. I pushed him away and said, stay away from me. But it was like he didn't hear me. He just said, these have been some of the worst months of my life. I can barely sleep or eat. I, I can't believe you're alive. Liar. He was a liar. I started shouting at him, saying, stop acting like you give a darn. You wanted me dead. Just wait until this gets out. You'll be behind bars for the rest of your life. Then I took the sketch out of my bag and threw it at him. Ronnie swore he'd never seen it before, but I didn't believe it. If it's not his... Then was he trying to say it was mine, or what? Ha! <laughs> Hilarious. Suddenly, Cody interrupted our argument and said, Calm down, please. Actually, I think the one who has been acting a bit shady recently is Kylie. Then Cody told us how, according to our grandfather's will, his inheritance would be split equally between me and Kylie. However, I was to be the one in charge of the company. Kylie had found out about this and had a big argument with our grandfather. And then not long after my accident, his health had deteriorated. Instead of letting him mourn my death, Kylie had insisted he transfer the business to her name so she could take care of it all. Then Ronnie said, Bella, it was Kylie who set up our trip. Then you suddenly disappeared. I searched for you in Cambodia for weeks, but Kylie persuaded me to come home because your grandfather was so ill. Then the police canceled the case, and Kylie kept telling me to file your death certificate. I shouldn't have listened to her. I'm so sorry. Stop blaming other people for your problem, I growled at Ronnie. But inside my heart, I felt like I couldn't breathe. Why would my sister do this? And then I heard Kylie's voice. And to prove it all, Ronnie told me and Cody to hide. And then he went towards her and said, Kylie, about Bella's death. Before Ronnie could finish his sentence, she gave him a big smile and put her arm through his. Well... Now that her funeral is over, nothing is stopping us from being together, right? Ronnie forced a smile. Then Kylie laughed and said, Oh, come on. Don't be sad. My jealous sister didn't deserve you. You know what? She actually had this whole plan to test your loyalty, but then she ended up getting a taste of her own medicine. At that moment, my head started to hurt, and suddenly some of my old memories came flooding back. The sketch. It was mine. I was the one who'd made the plan. It all started when Kylie had told me that Ronnie was cheating on me, and I'd believed her and followed her advice to fake my own disappearance to test his love for me. How could I have been so stupid? When I realized I was alone in that forest and she wasn't coming back, I panicked and fell into a trapping pit. 
hurting my legs and getting stuck. It was all coming back to me now. I couldn't handle this. I ran towards her and painfully screamed, How could you do this to me, Kylie? At first, she was shocked to see me, but then she just smirked and said, huh, Are you still alive? Well, either way, it's too late. The company is mine now. Oh, and so was Ronnie, baby. Then she just rolled her eyes and said, You were just the adopted child, so what makes you think you have the right to always steal everything from me? At that moment, our grandfather appeared and slammed his cane on the ground. Kylie, stop it. Kylie just sulked and said, Honestly, why would you give her the whole company? Then our grandfather said, Look at yourself, Kylie. Are you really fit to be running a company? Sort yourself out. You are a disappointment to this family with your dirty, nasty tricks. I couldn't believe Kylie was still using the adopted thing to hurt me. So what if I was adopted? That didn't mean I wasn't a part of this family. She'd always been so jealous of me, even though I hadn't done anything. Kylie started crying and ran out of there saying she was sick of never being anyone's favorite. Well, maybe if she hadn't left me to die, people would like her more. I was so shocked that she'd done this to me, and all because of jealousy. I won't lie. It took me so long to work through this. I still haven't forgiven her properly, but I guess it will just take time. As for me and Ronnie, we've taken over the family business, and I realized that Ronnie had always been loyal. Kylie had just made up that he was cheating because she couldn't bear to see me so happy. One thing's for sure, I won't ever be testing his love again. No more faking death for me. Hi everyone. Have you ever had someone get revenge on you? It's not fun, right? Well, this is my story about revenge but with a twist. You won't believe who my prankster turned out to be. Oh, let me introduce myself. I'm Audrey, and I'm 24. To say I've had an unhappy life would be an understatement. Firstly, my dad ditched my mom for another woman. And not long after that, my mom passed away from a serious illness. Basically, my entire life fell apart in a matter of months, and I was still too young at that time. It was tough growing up, and I always think that my life could never turn the page again. But on one fine day, someone popped into my life and changed everything. His name was Jim, and he was seven years older than me, and he seriously turned my life around. He lived in another city, but he often came to my city on business trips. We fell for each other quickly. That happiness didn't last long, though. One day I was working in the clothes store when a girl around the same age as me came in. She wanted my help to choose some dress, but she was pretty rude to me and I kept catching her staring at me with evil eyes. Who was she? And why was she treating me like that? Finally, after about two hours, she made up her mind and picked up only a tie that she wanted to buy for her husband instead. I was relieved to get rid of her, but shocked when I saw the name on her credit card. Jim Stewart. Her husband had the exact same name as my boyfriend. What a coincidence. She must have caught me staring at the card because she suddenly said, Yes, Jim is my husband. Now stay away from him. What? Her husband? My Jim. Before I even had a chance to react, she turned to everyone in the store and said, This girl is a gold digger and she's trying to break up my marriage. I was shocked. I tried to explain that it wasn't true, but she wouldn't listen to me. She just stormed out and I was left standing there hearing people whispering about me. It was the most humiliating moment of my life. I immediately ran to the staff room and called Jim. I was really hoping it had all been a big misunderstanding, but I could tell from Jim's tone that it was the truth. He told me he'd lied to me, and that he actually lived in the same city. He just made up the business trip stuff so he wouldn't have to see me often. Then he said, Audrey, I honestly love you. I'm serious about us. Hang on, was he for real? It was ridiculous. I was disgusted by him. How could he treat me like that? I hung up and felt horrified. It brought back horrible memories of the woman who stole my dad away from my mom. I didn't want to be that woman. The next day, I moved out of the house Jim had rented for me. I didn't want to be associated with that loser anymore. But life works in mysterious ways. The day I moved into my new house, I saw Jim's wife. And you won't believe it. It seemed that she'd just moved in next door too. Was this some kind of joke? As soon as she saw me, she smirked and said, Wow, what a coincidence. Hello, neighbor. I'm Linda. 
Seeing her unpacking her stuff all by herself, I couldn't help but wonder where Jim was. But then I thought maybe Linda had ended things with him and had moved here alone. I hope so anyways. I'd hate to have Jim as a neighbor. So that's when my new life began. And it has been crazy ever since. From that first week of living there, Linda started pranking me. It all began with her throwing trash into my yard. I even caught her doing it and she just grinned and said, Oops, my hand slipped. Then she walked away laughing. It made me furious. And that was just the beginning. One weekend, a delivery guy rocked up on my porch with 10 extra large pizzas. I tried to explain I hadn't ordered them. And that's when Linda appeared at my door and said, Oh, thanks for ordering me dinner, Audrey. I'm starving. Then she grabbed five of the pizzas and ran to her house, leaving me there with a bill of $100. Jeez, it was so annoying, and I had no option but to pay. Linda was too much. Seriously. As much as her pranks drove me up the wall, I also felt sorry for her. I knew what it was like to have someone you love stolen away from you. She must have hated me so much for ruining her marriage, even though it hadn't been my fault. I decided to just put up with her pranks. She'd get over it eventually, and it's not like they were harming me, right? Well, one night I heard the doorbell. I wasn't expecting anyone and was surprised to see a young guy standing there with a poster that said, I agree to be your boyfriend. Come out with me. I was totally puzzled and told him he had the wrong house, but then he showed me the address on the other side. It was my address. What on earth? I told him I wasn't interested, but he tried to grab my hand and said, Come on, girl, don't be shy. I told him if he didn't leave me alone, I'd call the police. So luckily he ran away. Needless to ask, I knew for sure that was Linda's joke, but this time she had taken it too far. I decided to go over and have a word with her once and for all. As I was walking to her house, I saw someone familiar on the other side of the road. I couldn't believe it. It was my dad? So many years had passed, and he'd completely changed, but there was no doubt it was him. I suddenly blurted out, Dad? But I didn't know what to do next. I was just thinking about my next move when I felt someone behind me. I turned around and saw Linda. She just smirked at me and walked away. What was her problem? Did she hear what I just said? I was so shocked at seeing my dad, I ran back into my house. I hated him for what he'd done to my mom. But he was still my dad, and I wanted to know if he was okay and what he was doing here. I barely slept that night as I couldn't stop thinking about my dad. The next morning, I was sitting by the window when he appeared again. This time, he was with Linda, and she was holding his arm. What was she doing with my dad? Why were they so close? Later that day, I saw him again, and this time, he and Linda were hugging. OMG, were they dating? Maybe Linda had heard me call him dad, and now she was flirting with him to truly get revenge on me. This was too much. The thought of Linda as a stepmom made me want to puke. I waited and waited, but he was inside her house and there was no sign of him leaving. Eventually, he left, and as soon as he was in his car, I ran over to her house. I was shaking as I knocked on the door, and as Linda opened it, I said, You are way too much. Can you just stop with the revenge already? Linda looked confused and said, What the heck are you talking about? Linda still didn't seem to get it. And I was about to explain when I heard footsteps. I turned around and my dad was right there. He said, What's the matter, Linda? Why are you fighting with this stranger? Huh? Stranger? Didn't he recognize me? Then Linda butted in and said, It's okay, Dad. We're just having a misunderstanding here. What? Dad? Is he your dad? Really? I stammered. Yeah, why? What's the matter? He said, Linda, you don't need to lie to me. I know you're dating my dad to get revenge on me. I continued. Whoa, hold on. What do you mean your dad? Linda gasped. At that, my dad looked confused too and walked to me and asked if he could look at my hand. After seeing my birthmark, he started crying and hugging me. Audrey, it's you. It's really you. I didn't know how to react, so I just let him hug me. It had been so long since anyone had held me like this. Ever since my mom had died, I'd tried to be strong and keep it together, but suddenly I couldn't hold back anymore. I burst into tears in his arms. We stood like that for a long time, and eventually he took me into Linda's house and told me the story. It turned out, after he left me and my mom, he got tricked by that woman, and he was so ashamed he decided to move to another city and start over. He was working hard on a construction site one day when he got injured, so he ended up in hospital. And that's when he met Linda. She'd been in a car accident and needed a blood transfusion urgently. 
She has a pretty rare blood type, but luckily my dad had the same type and he volunteered to give her a transfusion. After that, they became quite close, and seeing as Linda had lost both her parents in the car accident, my dad eventually adopted her. I couldn't believe it. My dad had been through so much, and this whole time, I thought he was off living his life with a rich woman. I felt so bad for him and decided to leave the past behind and forgive him. As for Linda, she was also left confused by this coincidence, so she left the room to process everything, while I and Dad took time to catch up on our lives. Later, Linda prepared dinner for us three, and before we digged in, she shyly grabbed my hand and said, Audrey, I've been so awful to you. I'm sorry. I know you aren't the one responsible for my divorce, but I still felt upset and that's why I played all those pranks. That was so childish, right? Please forgive me, sister. We laughed it off, then hugged each other to make peace. I couldn't believe it. After all these years of being lonely, suddenly I had a sister and my dad was back. My life had finally turned a corner and I almost laughed at the thought that it was all because of meeting Jim. At least one good thing had come out of that disastrous relationship. Not to brag, but these are really tasty. I bet even Grace, my picky sister, would finish this whole thing in one sitting. My cooking abilities were definitely up there with Michelin star chefs. I took another bite out of a fajita when I heard noises coming from the living room. Ah, Grace must be back. There she was, sprawled out on the couch, surrounded by her handbag, heels, jacket, and other stuff. Grace, we've talked about this. I can't keep on tidying up after you. I have studying to do, I said as I picked up her things. Suddenly, Grace sat up, rested her head in her hands, then looked at me with sad eyes. An uneasy feeling welled up in my heart. Oh no, what was wrong? She sighed, and as she glumly stared at the floor, she said, Easton... Pack your things. We're moving out tomorrow. What? Again? I couldn't contain my shock. Why, Grace? Do you owe someone money again? Grace didn't answer, so I worriedly asked, How much do you owe this time? Seven thousand dollars, she mumbled. What? Seven thousand dollars? That's crazy. What did you borrow so much money for? I plopped down on the sofa in disbelief. I sat there, frantically wondering how to deal with Grace's enormous debt. Her extravagant spending habits had started after our parents passed away. I guess she was trying to numb out her grief with the latest must-have outfit. Then suddenly, she burst out laughing. <laughs> Come on, bro, I'm just kidding. Huh? I gaped at her. Grace, it's not funny. For an instance there, I actually thought we'd have to elope or something. She grinned at me. Um, if there's no debt, then why are we moving again? I followed her as she walked out of the room, took a piece of fajita, and popped it in her mouth. Then she began to tell me everything. Turns out she'd found herself a sugar daddy fiancé, and we were moving in with him. I frowned at her. So what, now you're marrying some granddad? Why do you... Without letting me finish my sentence, Grace tapped my head with her knuckle. Do you seriously think a beautiful and famous model like me would marry some old man? Yet, even as a famous model, you still can't afford all of your branded goods. Then you have to keep on moving house all the time to avoid the debt collectors. I winked at Grace. She was about to hit me on the head again, but I dodged it. Ha! The next morning, there was a knock at the door. So I opened it to find a good-looking man in his mid-40s standing there. Ah, turns out he's Owen, my future brother-in-law. Before I had a chance to say anything, Grace tottered over in her heels and wrapped her arms around his neck. Honey, why are you so late? I'm so nervous. Smiling, Owen said, Darling, there's nothing to worry about. Everything's ready to welcome you and Easton. They continued coddling each other, so I quickly walked away. Seeing them like that gave me goosebumps. Ugh, cheesy. Owen drove us to his house. Well, I say house, but it was more like a royal palace. Inside there was a classic design to the place, with a luxurious style. I spotted a girl about my age sitting on the couch. Her arms were folded, and she had a disgruntled look on her face. Owen looked at her and said, Vivian, why are you still sitting there? Come and welcome your stepmom and uncle. Vivian smirked and coldly replied, No thanks. I'm not in the market for a new stepmom, especially one who's barely out of high school. Then she stormed off, slamming the door behind her. Oh no, she hates me! Does she? 
Seeing Grace look worried, Owen, though obviously a little angry, still tried to reassure her. It's okay, she's just being a typical teenager. Give her a few days and I'm sure she'll be fine. As for me, I was a little... No, I had to admit that I was very nervous. Vivian's sharp-eyed look had made me feel uncomfortable. I mean, I think a tank full of sharks would have been more welcoming than her. Looks like my new home life wouldn't be easy. The next morning, while I was helping Grace take some pictures of her posing in the living room, you know, for the gram, she suddenly yelled so loud that I had almost dropped the phone. Hey, hey, take that dog out right now! Hurry up! I turned around and saw Vivian walking what looked like a white cloud across the room. Seeing that, I ran toward her and said, Vivian, please take it outside, as Grace is allergic to dog fur. Vivian rolled her eyes and replied, This is my home, and this is my dog. Then she sparked as she let go of the dog lead. Oops! Her fluffy cloud dog immediately ran over to Grace and started barking at her. Grace yelped out, grabbed the pillow, then tried using it as a shield as she continued to scream at the dog to go away. At that moment, Owen appeared from upstairs, and with an angry look on his face, he snapped at her. Vivian, get Teddy out of here right now. No, it's them who should leave, she argued, while her dog barked so hard that Grace huddled up tighter in the corner of the couch and cried nonstop. Vivian, you've been warned. If you do it again, then I'll have no choice but to find Teddy a new home. Owen shouted loudly. Vivian huffed out, then gave Grace a fierce look as she picked up the dog and walked off. Man, it was true that life here wasn't easy at all. And it was about to get a lot harder. The next day, I was rearranging my new room when I heard a loud noise coming from downstairs. I went to check it out and found Grace instructing two maids on where to hang a giant print from one of her modeling photo shoots. And laying on the ground was the picture of Vivian with Owen and her mom. Move a little right? N no, a little left. Okay, Grace ordered them. I hurried over to her and asked, Um, what are you doing? She smiled. I'm just making a few decor adjustments. It looks far more luxurious now, don't you think? Then she picked a gray vase off the table and threw it into the trash can, then placed a double swan figurine in its place. Now that's much better, she rubbed her hands together. God, I know Grace was just trying to claim her position as host, but even so, she shouldn't have taken down the picture of Vivian's mom, if she knew. At that moment, a scream interrupted my train of thought. Vivian's. Sigh. I knew it. Grace, how dare you? Vivian blushed with anger. Then Grace interrupted her. This is my house too, and I have the right to put my mark on it. It makes the room look far more modern. No, you have no right. Take down that disgusting picture and put the old one back. This is my house and your father will soon be my husband. So I can do what I please. So stop your childish strops and just accept it. Vivian resentfully picked up the family picture, then quietly took it up to her room. As a witness to it all, I have to be honest, I thought Grace was being outrageous. After all, Vivian's mother passed away not too long ago, so it was only natural to not accept the stepmother, right? But now Grace was messing things up and seemed to want to delete all of the images of Vivian's mother in this house. That wasn't cool. That evening, I was reading The Theory of Everything in the garden when I felt a pat on my shoulder. I looked up to see Owen. Easton, I'm just letting you know that schools are all set up for you. You start next week. Then he added, Ah, you don't have a car yet, do you? I shall ask Vivian to give you a lift. You're in the same class anyway. Wait, what? I was actually going to the most prestigious and expensive school in the area? That's a dream come true, but... I heard that all the other kids that went there were rich and influential. Could a poor guy like me adapt to the luxurious environment there? A feeling of uneasiness suddenly welled up in my heart. But then I told myself that everything would be fine. Monday morning arrived and I made sure I was ready early. I lingered around in the kitchen waiting for Vivian, but 30 minutes later and she still hadn't appeared. I started to panic as I didn't want to be late on my first day. That was the type of bad first impression that would stick. 
I was about to walk to the bus stop when I saw Vivian slowly coming down the stairs. She winced at me and said, Oh, you're still here. I suppose you want to come with me then? I didn't answer and just followed her to the car. As soon as I sat down, she sped away. I hadn't even fastened my seatbelt yet, which I then tried to do in a fumbled panic. Every time she pressed down on the accelerator, my heart skipped a beat. Then after some hellish ten minutes, she stopped the car. Whew! I was still alive. But hang on, this wasn't school. I turned to Vivian and stammered to ask her, but she cut me off. Get out of my car, and if you dare tell anyone how you know me, you will pay! Then she raised her fist to my face. Wow, she didn't have to be that aggressive. But fine, anyway. I didn't want to have anything to do with her either. As I briskly walked to school, I found myself worrying that this would be like it was in the movies, and I'd be teased for being the newbie. The school came into view, and damn. It was even more spectacular in real life. I took a deep breath to muster up the courage to enter the school. The grandeur and beauty of the place was so overwhelming. I was used to graffiti-covered desks and a jam locker door. Not here. Even the restroom door signs were expensive-looking. I was wandering aimlessly, trying to find my classroom when suddenly, I saw this girl walk ahead and drop something. I picked it up and called after her. Sorry, is this yours? The girl turned around, then squeaked out, Oh my god, thank you! You're my knight in shining armor! I can't live without my glossy lipstick! Then she started doing this odd pose. Then she pouted and flicked out her hair. Was this a rich girl thing? It was very confusing, but hey, I guess she seemed nice. I smiled at her, then turned to walk away. That's when I noticed the groups of girls in the corridor. They were all staring at me, and one of them even winked. Then I overheard some of them talking about me. One of them said, Ooh, he's cute. And another said, It's about time we had a new hot boy in this school. Well... Girls from rich schools were weird. I know I'm quite a good-looking guy, but I'd never had girls act like this toward me before. I chuckled inwardly and went to find my class. It seemed inevitable that my school life was destined to be rather, um, interesting. Annyeonghaseyo! I'm Minzi from Seoul. Do you believe conspiracy theories are real? Because I do. Before I tell you my paranormal story, please like and subscribe. Nothing much to say about myself. I'm timid, introverted, but above all, I have a big ambition to webtoon horror category. Ahem! It's one of a kind, right? I've spent sleepless nights on that. Go kneel in the hallway for 30 minutes. Now! Aw oh, man, creepy Mincy is at it again. She wants to haunt the whole class with those ugly doodles or something? Ugly? Well, not as ugly as... Your... your grandmother? The whole class gasped at my insensitive words. But it's that girl! Supin's fault first! No matter how invested I was into my draft, it only ended up another chance for Supin and her posse to laugh at me. And well, thanks to my poor communication skills, no one wants to be my friend. Well, except Hajun, my childhood friend. He's always been so nice to me, not to mention he's handsome, friendly, and smart. You could tell I had a crush on him, right? But of course, I have no guts to tell him. <sighs> One day I was riding my bike around when I suddenly saw flyers from Blackwood Publishing, the biggest publisher on Webtoon. They're looking for a comic collaborator. Oh wow, I could send mine to them. But would I stand a chance? I bet the candidates are way more talented than me. As, I guess I better stop dreaming. Just then a skater kid dashed towards me. I managed to dodge him, but ended up crashing onto the pavement fence. I felt myself flip through the air, and then everything went black. When I opened my eyes, I found myself on the hospital bed. Mom and Dad were beside me. They looked like they couldn't believe it, then burst into tears. Mincy, honey, you're finally awake! Thank God, you've been in a coma for the whole month. We were worried sick. Hold on a sec. A whole month in a coma? Was I that seriously injured? It took me a few days to recover and process all of this before going back to school. Bet these kids didn't even notice I was missing class for a month though. But suddenly, someone sprung on my back. Supin? Oh, here you are, Urichingu! Let's go shopping today! The dress you picked me last time was perfect for my date! W what dress? Am I friends with these mean girls now? And not just them. Everyone else seemed to be friendly to me all of a sudden. They gave me cookies, carried my food tray, and even lent me their notebooks. 
It's weird, but kind of nice, though. <laughs> Except the only person I cared about just straight up ignored me. Hey, Hajun, wait up. Are you all right? I'm fine. It's none of your concern anyway. Oh, I just want to check in on you. <sighs> Could today get any weirder? Yes, it did. When I came home, I suddenly received an email from Blackwood Publishing. Congratulations! Your digital comic is now officially published on our website. To celebrate your success, please come to our office tomorrow. Huh? Is this a prank? I quickly checked, and it's not. My comics were literally on the headliner. But how? I mustered all the courage and went to the publisher. One step in, and I was overwhelmed by all the facilities. It was all so new to me. But just then, a group of people flocked around me and babbled to me nonstop, like they'd known me before. Yeah, our faith boy group BOF, Boys Over Flowers, is holding a concert tonight. Those opas make my emo heartbeat like crazy. Hey, you should come with us. It's gonna be so much fun. Eek! Oh, but didn't those boys only lip sync and dance half-heartedly? I even heard people say it's a waste of money going to their concert. Guys, did I say something wrong? Suddenly, I got this chill down my spine. Someone's hands were crawling around my waist. My boo-boo's here. Ah, pervert! I turned around and slapped him in the face. Oh, why did you do that? It's me who should ask this. Why did you touch me? Are you serious? Wait, are you still sulking with me? What? I'm sorry, okay? Now your boyfriend's ready for some snuggles. Boyfriend? Last time I checked, I still had the biggest crush on Hajun. How did I settle for this dandy? The guy was extremely clingy. He wouldn't leave me alone for a sec. Um, don't you have any work to do? Work? I am. I'm tending to the artwork of my life. You! <laughs> uh, sure. He also kept insisting on seeing my webtoon draft to help me polish it. Help my butt? He only messed it all up. Not to mention, everything is completely new to me, but everyone acted like I'm so used to all of this. This didn't feel right. Later the day I told my parents about this, and they said the doctor did mention possible memory loss due to brain injury. Hmm, makes sense. But why did they seem all anxious? Over the next few days, I tried to cope with my new life, even though it didn't make any sense at all. Like, I now had my favorite seat in the canteen. You nerds are sitting on Minzy's spot. Move! And apparently, I got a new hobby of skipping school now. What's the matter? You've done this so many times before. <laughs> Why did I even do this? Hajun, on the other hand, still kept distance from me. Until today, we had a project discussion. I tried to break the ice, but he only replied coldly. Why are you here? This whole month you've ditched me to hang out with your hot friends. And now you suddenly want to talk to me again? The, the whole month? What do you mean? You suddenly turned 180 degrees and became this attention seeker. You even pulled stupid pranks on those mean girls and got them to worship you as their leader. B but I was in a coma the whole month. <laughs> You're kidding, right? No. Why would I joke about something like that? Then who was the Mincy I saw every day at school the past month? Was he saying I was in two places at once? How was that possible? Hajun came up with a bunch of conspiracy theories, then concluded that I had an imposter, and she had been replacing me while I was in the hospital. It made perfect sense, but so bizarre at the same time. Seeing how freaked out I was, Hajun gently comforted me, saying he'd help me figure this out. I knew it. He still cared about me deep down. While we were discussing, Su Pin and her clique came interrupting us. Hey, Mincy! What are you doing with this geek? Remember our group meetup today with the Ansan Highs boys? Meet up? Uh, no, I don't think I can- Of course she remembers. Can I come too? I'll keep my mouth zipped. Fine. Now hurry up. Psst. What are you up to? Your imposters must have known about this meetup, so she might be there. This is our chance to catch her. Except the imposter was nowhere to be found, while I was stuck with these self-obsessed dudes. Where's your sass, Mincy? Introduce yourself. Oh, um, hi. Uh, I'm Mincy. You can call me Sugar Mincy. Because I'm sweet as pie and you sure want to take a, a bite. The whole room was dead silence. <laughs> Girl, you got no riz. Wonder why you can't date anyone. Everyone was laughing at my face. Luckily, Hajun grabbed my hand and took me out of there. Here's much better. But I couldn't help but thinking how my life had turned upside down because of that imposter. You all right? You don't have to force yourself into a mold that isn't for you. You're special for who you are. And I prefer this you rather than that imposter. I could feel something churning in my stomach. I'm so glad I always have him by my side. The next morning, Su Pin and her clique suddenly came to apologize for laughing at me. But why? 
Uh, didn't you come back last night and snapped at us? Told us to publicly apologize to you today? I did? So the copycat did come to the karaoke. Did she intentionally stalk me? Later that day, I went to tell Hajun about this. But why did she have to do that? I mean, she tried to stand up for you, right? I don't know. It must be part of her scheme or something. I have to find her ASAP. Suddenly, I got the notification of the Mean Girls live streaming at a cafe. Wow, guess who it is, guys? Oh, our little rich lady is a waitress. And she dared to look down on us all the time. She steered her cam towards the poor girl they were talking about. And she looked exactly like me. It's her! Hajun and I immediately rushed to the cafe and saw Su Pin and the imposter was about to jump at each other. What's going on here? Minzi? Wh what? Why are there two Minzis? <laughs> it's a g g g ghost! Guys, run! You! Who are you? And why did you pretend to be me, you imposter? Minzi, finally we meet. I'm your twin sister. Minha! S sister We're related? But mom and dad never told me I had a long-lost sister. Because you're adopted. They didn't know you had a twin sister who just got adopted before you. You're lying. I'm not. I didn't know this either until my mom was in her final moments. Mom had been sick for a while. So one day she called me to her bed, told me the truth before she drew her last breath. After that, I came to find you. But you were already in the hospital by then. You did wake up after surgery. But once you saw me, you immediately had a seizure and fell back into a coma again. Your parents and I agreed it was best for you if I stayed away and waited until you fully recovered. Meanwhile, you decided to live my life for me? Believe it or not, I actually wanted to know what my long-lost twin sister's like. How she's doing. Turns out you're a very talented comic artist, but you're always so insecure. And you're not doing well with the kids at school either. So I wanted to help you out. Sending your webtoon draft, working at the publisher, and fixing those mean girls' wagons. I just went with it and ended up getting too wrapped up. Really, did you get wrapped up in dating a random guy under my name too? And what about school? Did my parents agree to let you replace me? It was my idea and I persuaded them. They're just worried about you. I didn't ask for any of these in the first place. Thanks to you, I've become a stranger to my own life. You're happy now? Then I ran away, never wanting to see her again. Still, the worst part was, my parents lied to me. Why did you do it? You didn't tell me I'm adopted and now you let a stranger replace me? Do you really see me as your child? Minty, honey, of course you're our daughter. Nothing could ever change that. We were afraid you'd be sad if you knew you were adopted. Truthfully, we love you more than you can ever imagine. It's a lot to process, but I had to be strong and stay focused. But soon, whisperings caught my ears. Did you notice Mincy recently is different and even a little bit dull? Where's the cheeky Mincy we're used to? Hey, do you get that bad vibe from Mincy lately? Somehow she'd gone back to being a sullen, creepy nerd again. God, why did everyone keep comparing me to that imposter? Hey, you alright? No, I'm not. Everyone seemed to like Minha and she'd only been here for a month. But nobody cared about me. I do care about you. You always got me. Your handsome friend, ready to the rescue. <laughs> Whatever you say. Come to think of it, your sister only meant well. Despite her way, all she wants is to help you to be more open and show your hidden talents to the world. What Hajun said got me thinking that night. Maybe he's right. If it hadn't been for her, my webtoon would have been forever locked in my iPad. Besides, she's only got me as a family. I've got to see her now. Hey, I came to apologize. I could see you only meant well. And I was only acting ungrateful. I'm sorry. And also, thank you, Uni. There's nothing to be sorry about. It's my fault too for acting on my own and getting myself to fall in love with Si Wu. I haven't told him yet, but I will find the chance. Sorry for dragging you into my stuff. I leapt into her embrace and felt the happy tears running down my cheeks. After the teary reunion, we spend hours catching up with each other. It's like we're reading each other's minds. Must be the twin bond. <laughs> I even invited her to my house and we had a good time. For the next couple days, I only focused on the webtoon and getting to know myself better. With Hajun's help, I now felt more comfortable and confident speaking with others. One day at the publisher, while I was having a little chit-chat break, a colleague rushed in. Minzi, Minzi, did you hear the news? Your webtoon won the first prize of Comic Award. Comic? The most renowned award in webtoon? Oh my god, I'm dreaming, right? My hard work finally bore fruits. I was celebrating with my colleague when out of nowhere, Si Wu dragged me out. 
You better announce me as the co-author. I helped you with the sketches, the script, the coloring, yada yada yada. remember? What? You were only messing it up. Do you even know what the story is about? Babe, don't challenge me. Or else, I would tell the director, aka my dad, to kick you out. And by the way, let's break up. Excuse me? You really think I like you? Oh, please. I only do it for your webtoon, babe. Ugh, that dandy jerk. I knew he was no good. But what could I do now? Later, I told Minha everything, and she was heartbroken and begged me to help her sneak into Siwoo's office. So I did. Siwoo, please don't leave me. How could I live without you? Oh, it'll be hard, because I'm irresistible. <laughs> but you gotta let go, babe. You have nothing else to offer me. I already know you don't love me, but I do love you. And I already put a love spell on you. You'll forever be haunted by me. <laughs> then, Minha fainted, crashed on the floor. Scaredy Cat Siwoo was freaking out. Hey, hey, you're not gone, right? Suddenly, the light turned off. What in the Holy Spirit's going on? The light turned on again, and the guy stopped screaming until he saw me. Hi, babe. Ah! What? Why are... What are you? You don't recognize me. It's me, Minji, in spirit form. Stay the heck away from me. After every despicable thing you've done to me. Please, please. Come with me, you crooked. To... to... where? To the other side. He was so scared his eyes went white. Then he fainted. <laughs> Serves you right. And let me introduce my Ekip with Minha, who should win Oscars for that performance, and Hajun, who's behind the light effect. Didn't think of that, did you? After that, Siwoo kept insisting I was some spiritual force that haunted this place. Then eventually, he quit the job. And of course, I had the full copyright of my webtoon and was eligible to receive the comic award. My career has just begun as I decided to continue to work at Blackwood. Mom and Dad also decided to adopt Minha into our family, and we could finally be together. That's the magic I wanted to tell you. This unexpected event changed my life for the better. Chance doesn't come twice, right? You have to grasp it. By the way, I want to ask, do you guys have any unexpected events that changed your entire life? Tell us in the comments below. Hang on, here's one more thing I have to do for the old shy me. Hajun, uh, I've been wanting to tell you something. The past event got me thinking, if I don't start telling you how I feel now, I might regret it later. So, Kim Hajun, I like you. So, so much. Finally, it took you that long. When you were in hospital, you weren't the Minzi I knew, which freaked me out thinking what if I couldn't see the real you anymore. It's comforting that you're still here, because I got a huge crush on you too. Why did this fence have to be so high? Oh no, that didn't sound good. It was time to get out of here. But, ah! Uh, I seem to be stuck. Suddenly, a security team was blinding me with a flashlight and telling me not to move. Not that I could anyway. <sighs> they dragged me down. Then the next thing I knew, I was being pushed into a chair and interrogated by security guards. But all they got out of me was silence. A few minutes later, Mr. and Mrs. Langston showed up. Yeah, they're the wealthy couple who owns this mansion. They're the people that I was looking for. I suppose I did owe them an explanation. I'm sorry for this disturbance, but it's not what you think. I saw your job advert for a housemaid, and I wanted to apply. But the guard said I was too young and refused to let me in. The thing is... My dad has a rare heart condition, and if he doesn't receive treatment soon, then chances are he won't make it. I really don't have any other choice. So please can I have the job and also six months salary advance? Right at that moment, a girl my age fell into the room, peered at the Langstons, then started laughing. Carla, this is not acceptable. Aren't you ashamed of your appalling results for the Francis Academy entrance exam? You should be studying hard to redeem yourself, not out partying at this hour. This Carla girl just rolled her eyes at them, then wobbly walked off. I noticed Mr. Langston comforting his wife, who seemed to be in much distress at the girl's inconsiderate behaviors. 
So this must be their daughter then. They sure seem to take her education seriously. And she applied to my school. Hmm. That gave me an idea. You know, if you want to improve Carla's academic performance, I can help you. They both gave me skeptical looks, so I showed them my academic records and told them how I was a valedictorian and had successfully scored a scholarship at Francis Academy. On hearing about my achievements, any apprehensions they had soon faded. And so, they'd come up with a plan. A risky one. They would pay for my dad's hospital fees until he fully recuperated if I took on the identity of Carla and flew to South Korea to study at an international high school there, while Carla would take my place and enroll at Francis Academy just as they wished. This deal sounded like the answer to my prayers, but I knew it would be tricky. Pretending to be somebody else in a completely different country was beyond my understanding, so I agreed to do it, but only on two more conditions. First, a guardian must be present, who would take care of all my paperwork and stuff. Second, after I completed the deal and returned, the Langstons had to help me get into my dream school the prestigious GBA University, obviously. They gave it a thought, then shook my hand in agreement. It looked like we had a deal! The next thing I knew, I was in an elite neighborhood in Seoul, Korea. Whoa! Talk about luxury! So this was what it felt like to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth. Mr. Preston dropped me off at school and repeatedly told me not to draw attention to myself. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, by the way, Mr. Preston is the Langston's lawyer, and according to the contract, he's also my guardian. He seems oh so serious, but I guess he's okay. Whoa, this school looked so modern, the architecture was a work of art all in itself. I wandered around the endless corridors and tried to find my class. Everyone seemed quite friendly, and the class president, Minjun, even gave me a guided tour. All the students' outstanding paintings, photos, and models were displayed all across the campus. Countless classrooms of different subjects, from science to art, just made me gasp in awe. I was admiring the artwork, when suddenly Minjin blurted out, Sorry, I've got to go. Miss Lee is looking for me. It'll only take a few minutes, so wait here for me, okay? Then he rushed off, so I lingered around the hall, that's when I spotted a group of girls nearby. I recognized the one from my last class. I'm sure her name was Isabella. I was about to walk over to greet them when I realized they had this one girl cornered and were making fun of her hairband. Ugh! Where did you get that horrid thing from? I suppose it must have come from some thrift shop or something. I heard that's where poor people shop. <laughs> Ugh, this whole thing disgusted me. They outcasted someone just because she didn't come from ridiculously rich households like them. <sighs> I knew that poor girl's feeling all too well. I gotta help her. But I didn't want to get anyone's back up and draw attention to myself. Hmm, what could I do? Ah, got it. Hey, the teacher's coming. I'll stall her for you guys. Run! My plan worked a treat. As Isabella and her friends nodded at me, then rushed off. I then went over to the girl asking if she was okay. Get away from me! She flinched me off her and then ran off. Huh? I was only trying to help. As I turned around, I saw Minjin looking at me. A bit impressed, I think. He told me that the students here were divided into two groups. 90% are rich and the remaining 10% are poor kids entering under scholarships. Most of the students are quite friendly to each other. Well, except those I just witnessed. Isabella's part of the rich kid group who think their upbringings make them superior to others. She's often mean to the 10% group as she believes they don't deserve to be here. And as you can guess, that girl they upset? She's called Susie. She's in the 10% group and she's the smartest student in our year. What nonsense! School is school! We're here to study and should all be treated equally! Too right, new girl. I knew there was something different about you. The next day, when class was over, Isabella tapped on my shoulder and thanked me for the warning. 
Then she asked me to join her group for lunch. I was about to politely refuse when Minjin appeared and asked me to join him. Phew! Thanks to Minjin, I had an excuse to quickly flee the scene. However, I did look back and see that Isabella was giving this offended look. After that, Minjin and I started hanging out more. We soon became close friends, and we both decided that the dynamics around here needed to change. So, we set out to help the 10% Club. One lunchtime, Isabella and her clan purposely bumped into this boy, causing him to spill food all over himself. While they laughed and pointed at him, I rushed over there, took the food, and slammed it onto Minjin's face. Minjin immediately understood my intention. Then he also took a handful of noodles and smeared it all over Isabella. Cue the canteen erupting into one big messy food fight. <laughs> Another time, the school was preparing for a cultural fair. One boy from the 10% group had this awesome idea to open a food stall serving traditional dishes from different countries. Everyone agreed, apart from, yep, you guessed it, Isabella and her snooty besties. Such a peasant. Too used to working as a waiter to serve others, huh? I winked at Minjin. Then we stayed behind and secretly wrote Isabella and her friends' names on the list of participants and submitted it to the teacher. Now, they had no choice but to serve food at the super crowded fair. The funniest part was they finally got a taste of their own medicine when the 10% group made the most of ordering them around and complaining. Ew, this ratatouille is too bland. Add some more salt. And this milk tea is too sweet. Start a new batch with less sugar. I have to admit, I was enjoying watching the mean kids squirm, but I guess my enjoyment hadn't gone unnoticed, as afterward, Isabella approached me. Those peasant kids aren't at the same level as you and I. I suggest you put more care into who you choose to associate with, or you could end up being treated like they are. Whatever. I just rolled my eyes, walked away from her, then continued to hang out with my friends in the 10% group. Isabella and her minions gave me dirty looks, but due to the Langston's name and fortune, that's all they could do. Just like that, my high school years passed by. I had some great friends. And guess what? Yep, I was now dating Minjin. I loved being here in South Korea, and I'd even grown fond of Preston, who despite being a grumpy gut, now felt like family to me. I mean, don't get me wrong. I missed my family back home like crazy, but dad was getting better now, and we regularly FaceTimed. As amazing as my life was now, deep down I always felt like I was living in a dream. None of this truly belonged to me, and everything would be over as soon as I left this place. And eventually, my last week here arrived. As I was studying for my last ever exam, the SAT, I received a message from an unknown number. I know your secret. Drop out of the test, else I'll expose you. What? Who could it be? I called the number and a distorted voice answered the phone. I begged them to tell me why they were doing this, but they just replied, You don't need to know. Just do as I said. Then they hung up. Luckily for me, Preston isn't just an amazing lawyer, he's also a tech genius. Thanks to him, we tracked down the location of the phone. Hmm, I bet you're just as curious as I am to find out who it was. And now is the moment of truth. Huh? No way! Standing there looking startled was... Susie! Why would she do this to me? It made no sense. I mean, I know we weren't friends, but I had nothing against her. Why did she despise me to the point of willing to ruin my life like this? Please let me explain. Ever since you arrived here, I lost my top spot at school, which means I've also lost a full scholarship to college. My family will never be able to afford it themselves, so I decided to investigate you. And that's when I found out that you were not the real Carla Langston, and you got paid by her parents to achieve all these academic records for her. I get why you're upset, but... You didn't have to blackmail me. You don't strike me as someone who would do such a thing, so it's kind of disappointing that you did. I'm not. I... I'm a dead end, Irene. You have to understand. The 
This is my entire future I'm losing here. And what for? So some rich, spoiled girl can get into college without doing any of the work? <sighs> it seemed like I had a lot of thinking to do. In the end, I realized all I felt towards Susie was pity. This was all my fault, and it wasn't fair for someone as capable as Susie to have her entire future ruined because of me. So I had to be the bigger person here. I decided to ask the Langstons to give Susie the spot at GBA University which was previously reserved for me as part of the deal. I mean, no worries. With this big brain, I could easily get in there on my own, right? And so, as soon as I was done with the test, I quietly left South Korea behind, without saying goodbye to anyone, including Minjin. Susie and I boarded the same flight back to the state. She couldn't help but thank me all the way there. And, well, let's just say, by the time the plane landed... We became good friends, but things didn't all go as swimmingly as I intended. It turned out Carla was even more negligent than first thought. All she managed to get was a high school diploma with shockingly bad grades. These were now my bad grades. My dream of attending a prestigious university was over. <sighs> I just have to make do with a community college instead. A year flew by and there wasn't a single day that I didn't think about South Korea or Minjin. I couldn't talk to him anymore. I promised the Langstons I'd cut all ties with my life there. I mean, Susie was the exception. One day while going out with Susie, she was showing me something interesting on Facebook, when we happened to scroll past a post of Minjin's, which read, Finally I found you, the love of my life. My heart sank. Wow. It looked like he'd found someone else, while well, my heart still pined for him. <sighs> but life still goes on, and a week after that, I was waiting for Susie outside of her college, daydreaming how this could have been my life. I saw a familiar face heading towards me. Was that... Minjin? But wait! He was with a girl. Carla! Hang on, his Facebook post was about her? The love of his life was Carla? I couldn't do this right now, so I willed back tears as I took a deep breath and turned to walk away. But suddenly, I felt a hand pull me back. It was Minjin. It's really you. I finally found you. I've been looking ever since graduation, and then my information led me here and to... Me! Carla appeared next to him and smirked at me. Hey. Who am I to stop the course of true love? So I told him your real name and helped him search for you. I mean, you're smart, so I figured you'd attend this university too. No, you messed up my grades, remember? Anyway, it doesn't matter anymore. I turned and looked at Minjin. I'm so sorry, Minjin. I wanted to tell you everything, but I couldn't. He took my hand in his and gave me this adoring smile. I found you. And trust me, right now, that's all that matters. This was like a dream come true. That gorgeous man in front of me is Ethan. My crush since I was just 14. Back then, Ethan was my dad's business partner so he'd often come over to our house for dinner. For years, I adored him in secret. But now, at 19, I could finally be honest about my feelings. So, when I ran into him by chance in the grocery store, I felt like it was meant to be. He invited me for a drink in the cafe nearby, and we instantly hit it off. We started dating, and now we're an official couple. There's just one thing that worries me. Ethan is recently divorced and has a 10-year-old daughter, Clarice, who he has full-time. While daydreaming, I couldn't hide away from the thought of being someone's stepmom. Oh my, I didn't want to become a mom yet. Don't worry, Clarice is a cute kid. I just know you two will get along. Clarice gave me a devious smile the moment she saw me. Another fish got hooked. Huh? Hey, that's not the right manner. Apologize, now! Ethan immediately said. 
Clarice let out a loud, ugh, then reluctantly apologized. Great! When has it ever been easy to be friends with a naughty ten-year-old girl? I understand this better than most, as I have a little sister. She's either giving me a headache or crazing at me for candy, and I could tell that Clarice was going to be no different. <sighs> One day, Ethan called me in a panic, saying he had an urgent business trip. They informed me at the very last minute. I didn't have time to find a babysitter. Can you help me take care of Clarice for a few days? What? I've only just met the girl, and now I have to mind her for a few days? I still didn't know what to say when Ethan continued. I'll make it up to you after this. And then, the next thing I knew, Clarice was at my front door. Oh gosh, somebody help me! Well, you know those girls that age, like my little sister? I kept pouring out while Mike just smiled and slightly shook his head. I have to make her like me to win over Ethan. So, lovely Mike, can you please come hang out with us? Seriously? Please? Aren't you good with the ladies? Fine. You know I can't say no to you. I took Clarice to a theme park. She frowned the moment she saw Mike. Um, who's this? I don't like strangers. I smiled and said, This is Mike. He's really cool and I don't care. Cindy? What kind of situation did you drag me into? Man, I had to ask myself that question. This wasn't what I envisioned it to be. The outing turned into a competition between them. Clarice challenged Mike to play game after game with her until she won. In the end, they played with the water guns, and I knew for sure Mike let her win. But as soon as he let go of his water gun, Clarice squirted water all over him, leaving him completely drenched. Oops. What on earth is this? That's the price for the loser. <laughs> Okay, Cindy, that's enough. Have fun! And he stormed off. Oh no, what have I done to him? I stood there dumbfounded, staring at Clarice. Okay, so it was kind of funny, but I couldn't laugh at my poor friend. I want ice cream! Clarice grinned, then skipped away. Hmm, ice cream. A girl after my own heart. On the way home, we talked so much about her fave show, The Babysitter's Club, and how Stacy is her favorite character. Hmm, maybe the day wasn't so bad after all. A few days later, Ethan returned, and I was really excited to see him. Thank you so much for taking care of Clarice. Meanwhile, I noticed Clarice was slowly backing out, with an awkward look on her face. I thought she'd be as happy as me to see him, but it didn't seem that way. Darling, are you okay? Are you sick? I... I'm okay. I need to go to my room. After that, at dinner, the question, are you sick, was raised no less than ten times, and it made me feel sick too. I said I'm not sick, and I don't want to see a doctor. Ethan, I think Clarice is fine, so maybe stop asking her. Hearing that... Ethan seemed uncomfortable and turned away. Weird. What was wrong with them? Maybe this was just something they did. Hmm. Whatever it is, I wasn't enjoying this heavy atmosphere. The next day after lunch, Clarice was helping me clean the table while Ethan was packing to go on his next trip. She insisted on washing the dishes while I said goodbye to Ethan. We were hugging in the doorway when suddenly... I heard a loud scream coming from the kitchen. Ethan and I both rushed in there and saw Clarice crying as she gripped her hand. Ethan frantically asked, What happened? While I quickly searched for a first aid kit. I was washing the dishes, but I accidentally cut my hand. Cindy, I'm sorry. I wasn't being careful. Please don't punish me. What? What was she talking about? Ethan seemed to have the same question as me. Cindy always makes me do the chores. She told me if I do them badly, I can't have dinner. Huh? Why was she saying things that weren't true? Turning pale with shock, I muttered out, No, that's not true. I, I don't want to stay here. Dad, let me go home. Clarice interrupted me as she was crying harder. 
I'm so sorry, but I have to go now. I don't even know if you're lying or not. How can you say that to me? Clarice shouted. You monster! Then she ran upstairs. I stood there not knowing what to do. My brain couldn't process what just happened. Ethan looked at me and sighed. Why didn't he say anything? He didn't honestly think I was capable of doing that. Did he? I decided I needed to confront Clarice about this. So I went up to her room and calmly said, Clarice, why did you say that? You forced me to do all the chores. What? How can you lie like that? I never do such a thing. Oh, but are people going to believe you or a poor little girl? Oh, my God. There was me, thinking she was a sweet kid, when in actual fact, she was the complete opposite. I rushed outside and, shaking, I pulled my phone out. I called Mike and told him everything. Oh boy, that kid is complicated. Maybe she doesn't want you to be with her dad. But even so, what she did was weird. I think you should stay away from them. But how to? I couldn't just run away. Besides, Ethan was on his trip. Again, and I was in charge of her. So I kept my distance. No more talking or having fun. But it seemed that Clarice had other ideas. I was watching TV in the living room when Clarice appeared and pulled my shirt. Cindy, I want you to play video games with me. The more silent I was, the harder she pulled. No, Clarice, I'm not in the mood. I shouted, go play by yourself. Then I walked off. A few minutes later, Cass, a senior student, came over to give me some documents. We sat down and had some iced tea. Then suddenly, bam, and a cry. Oh no. Cass and I rushed to the noise. Clarice had fallen down the stairs in the basement and was surrounded by the laundry basket and dirty clothes. Cass quickly ran down there and helped her up. Are you okay? What happened? Cindy told me to do the laundry in time. The basket was so full, so I slipped. No, no, no! I screamed inside my head when Cass gave me a concerned look. Cass, please, I'll explain later. Can you please leave? Why? I screamed at Clarice's face the moment Cass left. If you don't play with me, you'll be a child abuser. You'll have to go to jail. Ugh, this is driving me crazy. Just a few days ago, she wanted her dad to take her away from here, and now she's blackmailing me for not playing with her? Right at that moment, Ethan called. Hi, Cindy. I just want to check on you two. Is Clarice sick or anything? Ugh, what on earth is this? Am I crazy? Or are these two actually weird? OMG. I need Mike. Now. Please, take me away from here. I said as I opened the door for Mike. Stop! Clarice shouted. You two can't go anywhere. Oh, now you're telling me what not to do? If you go, I'll tell the whole world how badly you've been treating me. You'll both go to jail. So that's your scam? Her smirk disappeared. She turned pale and stuttered. N no, it, it was my dad's. Your dad's scam? Clarice looked flustered as she realized what she had just blurted out. Then she quickly covered it up. Nothing! Mike sat down and looked at her with stern eyes. I stood there, waiting for the answer. I... Um... My daddy made me! Eventually, Clarice confessed. Turns out, Ethan was a professional scammer who scams young, wealthy girls into giving him money. Worse, he dragged his daughter into his scheme. The plan went like this. He used his handsome looks to flirt with the girls, then Clarice's cuteness to get the girls' empathy. After that, he would go on some last-minute business trip and ask them to take care of Clarice. Meanwhile, Clarice would pretend to be seriously sick. When Ethan arrived back, he would persuade the girls to hand over money for hospital fees, then he and Clarice would disappear out of their lives. At first he told me to do what he said and he'd get me a bike! 
What about the abusing lie you made up? I asked, still shocked. I made up that excuse so Dad would take me away. I really like you, so I don't want his plan to work. Then why did you continue to act up? Because Cindy was mad at me, and I wanted her to play with me, so I pulled that trick again. Tears streamed down my face. Unbelievable! I voluntarily stepped into his trap right at the beginning. He didn't even have to do much. I felt like such an idiot. After that, we exposed Ethan. Clarice helped us, too. Turns out, he's bankrupt, which is why his wife left him and why he's no longer my dad's business partner. Ethan was arrested, but Clarice's mom was out of the country, and she refused to return for her daughter. To be honest, I love Clarice, and I didn't want her to live in the orphanage. So I let her live at my place for a while before I told my parents everything. Obviously, my parents have more capacity and power to deal with this. It took a while for Clarice to get over her guilt and settle in, but now we get on better than ever. She's a sweet, cute girl who deserves far better than her parents have given her. Then one day, I came back home from college to find Clarice placing some roses on the dining table, which was already romantically set up with candles and steak. Cindy, you're back! How can you prepare a full dinner like this? Clarice didn't say anything. She just giggled and ran to her room. Someone hugged me from behind. Would you mind being my date tonight? It was Mike. Thinking about it, I guess my perfect man was right under my nose this entire time. So, grinning, I turned around and replied, I thought you'd never ask. I walked into school, with whispers following me, but is it just me, or did the crowd seem even more chatty today? I nervously walked up to my locker and, oh my god, splattered across it was the stamp Teenage Karen in spray paint. I shivered from embarrassment, surrounded by giggles and gawping faces. I ran straight into the bathroom and shut myself in a cubicle to calm down. You might be wondering, how did I get here? I don't sound like those unreasonable, cocky people that usually grow into Karens, right? Because I'm not one of them. However, I realize how my actions could have caused this situation. I was adopted into one of those wealthy families who pressured their children to grow successful and flawless. As a result, I have never got any lower grade than an A or lost a competition. I was that perfect child that was too scared to fail. Because nobody had ever taught her how failures work. But then one day, everything changed. One casual school day, I walked into the literature class and saw an unknown boy already occupying my desk. All the girls were giving him dreamy looks. Hey! I tapped on his shoulder. Is this your seat? Yes. Oh, sorry, I didn't know. He then moved to another desk. I forced a polite smile and took my seat. Then our literature teacher announced that we would have a little test today, not affecting our grades. Being the teacher's pet around here, I could tell this was because she wanted to test Austin, that new boy. Okay, fine by me. Another A-plus to add to my collection. But only, I somehow couldn't concentrate. I looked out of the window, trying to find some writing inspiration, but that new guy was blocking my view. Okay, to be fair, he looks pretty cute. Without realizing it, I started staring at him. Then suddenly he turned to me. We made eye contact, which startled me. Oh gosh, wake up, Catherine. You have a test to finish. I tried to focus on my essay again, but I kept having this feeling of him looking at me. Jesus, I hope he didn't get the wrong idea. I'm not like those girls who only go to school to check out cute boys. Time's up. I nervously turned in my paper, as I knew I was distracted and didn't deliver my best. But never mind, nobody could beat me, even on my worst days. Well, not this time. The following day, the teacher handed me back my work and whispered, I don't know what happened, but it's okay, don't worry. Huh? I quickly took the paper and... B-minus? 
Okay, I knew I couldn't get an A-plus with this one, but not even a normal A? I've never had a B before! The disappointed faces of my parents popped up in my mind. What if they wouldn't want me anymore? They adopted me, gave me this luxurious, perfect life, and this is how I thanked them? I started to panic and looked around to find the teacher. I needed to clear this up. And that's when I caught a glimpse of Austin's paper. An A? No way! I slammed it on the table and stood up. I protest this grade. There must have been some mistake. Can you please look over my essay? Oh, don't worry. This isn't an official test, so it's fine. No, it's not fine. How can I possibly be worse than this new kid? You have to reconsider it, or I'll take it to the principal. Kate, you're being unreasonable. Sit down, or I'll take you to the principal. I took a deep breath and calmed myself while sitting down. There were whispers about me circulating the class, but I couldn't care less, as I had this B- minus to deal with. My parents could never know about this. After this, I knew my friends were just pretending to be okay with me. As one time, when we had to team up for the relay running in PE class, no one picked me. In the end, Coach Malone had to add me to a group. And guess what? It's the group of Austin and his fangirls. I hate this. And look at him. Such a thorn in my eye. I wish I could just throw this baton at his annoying face. But, thud, I fell face down just inches away from Austin. Are you okay? Just take the dumb baton and go. Ugh, this dude is definitely bad luck. I crawled up, then suddenly I heard giggles. It was a group standing by the track lanes with their phones up. Were they laughing at me? I stormed over to them with my hands up to cover their cameras. What's so funny? Do you have any common courtesy? Um, chill out. It's not- Has no one taught you to help others in need? Not record them and laugh over it? No, listen. Funny story. We actually- So you still think it's funny? Delete that video right now! No, you can't! Just- Just hear us out! But that only made me madder and yank on the phone even harder. Then, oops, the phone went flying and hit the hard concrete ground. Oh no, I didn't mean to. The boy whose phone it was freaked out and ran over to pick it up. Look what you've done! Who would ever want to film you? We were just making a performance video for the cheerleading team. Through the cracked screen of his phone, I saw a video of the cheerleaders practicing on the field on the other side of the track lanes. Oh no. This was so embarrassing! I quickly asked for the guy's contact and promised I'll make up for his broken phone, then ran back to my class. I felt exhausted. It's like the whole world was against me. But at least there was always one thing that could ease my soul. Yes, it's my books. That's why whenever I feel drained, I'd go to the school library to relax. So, like every other time, I made my way there, but... I think I'd forgotten my library card. Oh well, no big deal, as the librarian, Mrs. Flenderson, is basically family to me at this rate. She doesn't even ask for my card anymore. Hi, Mrs. Flenderson, I said as I passed by the librarian's desk, but then I was taken aback by some unfamiliar voice. Um, where are you going? Card, please? It turned out Mrs. Flenderson was out of the office and there's this freshman who volunteered to fill in. I asked her nicely to let me in, but she kept on saying no while chewing on her gum, which drove me crazy. Ugh. Listen, do you know who I am? I don't need some dumb card to get in here. Yeah, yeah, but not on my watch. Look, half of these books are from my family's donation. You should be showing some more respect, kiddo. Your snobby opinions won't work with me. Here, we attend the same school, so we're all equal and rules are rules. Let me speak to your supervisor. Call Mrs. Flenderson. You're such a Karen. I froze upon hearing that word. That was the first time I'd been called by that nickname, and only then I realized how much of a fuss I'd been making here. But it's just that I was already in such a terrible mood 
All I wanted was to just go to my safe place, and that too was impossible now. I then quickly composed myself and walked away, but to my dismay, some passerby had been watching me throw a tantrum since God knows when, and yep, Austin was there too. Why would I be surprised anymore? My stories at the running track, also at the library, soon spread around the school like wildfire. People didn't try to hide the fact that they were avoiding me anymore and started calling me Karen. So, obviously, this one time when we had to pair up in literature class for the midterm essay, I was left alone again. At least, that's what I thought, until Austin leaned over and asked me to be his partner. Though I hated his guts, I cannot fail his test. So, yeah, I've agreed. We met up later that day at his house. I was enthusiastically showing him some of the book options for our essays topic, but he was totally unbothered, scrolling through his phone. Yeah, yeah, whichever you like. He'll be taking care of all this anyway. What do you mean? Look, I only paired up with you because you're so good at this. So please just do your thing. Whatever. I don't care. I hate these. You don't like literature? But last time you scored an A. Oh, that? Don't be too bitter, as I just copied your work and changed it around a bit. So technically it's your A too. Yay, congrats. What? So all of the stress I had to bear these past few weeks turned out was just because he cheated? Ugh, I was so angry. Feeling on emotional overload, I burst out crying which got Austin flustered. Hey, what's wrong? Calm down. Don't cry. I'm sorry. Please stop crying. Then through tears, I started telling him about all the pressure I have to bear from my parents' expectations and about all the care and mishaps I've gotten caught up with lately at school. At one point, Austin apologized to me as he realized this all originated from the act of him copying my essay. That night, we didn't get anything done for the essay but we just sat down and talked. After such an oversharing session, Austin and I naturally got closer to each other. In fact, he became the only friend I had at school. It's nice to have a friend again, but it's still hard when your reputation at school was totally ruined and everyone knew you as teenage Karen. Especially when I had a big speech contest coming up. I hadn't been in the right mind to study, so I barely had anything prepared for the competition. I kept imagining my parents' disappointed faces when I didn't win first place. The night before the contest, I was so stressed out that I had to pour it all out into my diary in hope that I would feel lighter and ready for the big day. Then suddenly my phone rang. It was Austin. Hey. Good luck tomorrow, Kate. See you there. Thanks. I don't know anymore. Are you still stressed over it? If you're this worn out because of it, then... I know a cure. What is it? Just quit. It's just some contest. And you don't have to come first in everything. We're all just human after all. You're crazy. <laughs> okay, I'll get some sleep now. See you tomorrow. But my mind was too cluttered with thoughts and worries to sleep. The next morning, I arrived in front of the competition venue, but hesitated to go inside. Then suddenly... I found myself running away from that building while phoning Austin. Meet me at the park, West Gate. Ten minutes later, he arrived in his car. I hopped in the front seat, then said, Let's go to the theme park. I want to have fun. Austin looked at me, stunned. But then he smiled and drove off without a question. Yep, just like that. I dropped out of the contest and turned off my phone to just enjoy a day being a teenager. I went on all the scariest roller coaster rides, screaming my heart out, leaving all my worries behind. By dusk, I was 100% ready for my parents' tantrum. They probably would disown me now, but I felt strangely calm. As Austin drove up to my house, I could see my mom pacing back and forth in the front yard. There she was, already waiting to punish me. Upon seeing me, mom ran straight over and gave me a hug. Oh my god, honey! Where have you been all day? We've been worried sick about you! Wait, what's going on? Why isn't she angry? Then Dad also ran over to us as soon as he spotted me, holding something in his hand. Sweetie, 
I'm so sorry for not knowing how much you've been through. We didn't realize our high expectations were putting so much pressure on you. We might have been too strict on you, but I want you to know that we'll always love you, no matter what. Oh, Dad was holding my diary. So, they know everything now. I cried tears of relief. It was so good to know they finally understood my feelings, and they even swore to change and try to listen to me more. That day, I realized that my parents loved me unconditionally, and whatever happened in my life, they would never give me up. What's up, teenage Karen? Um, yeah, my friends still call me Karen. But it's okay, as they only call me it in a jokey way. Nothing mean or anything. I'm over everything that happened, and so is everyone else. It's all just memories now, but thanks to that Karen phase, I was reminded not to be so strict on myself. So I don't end up being a Karen to my own self again. 